you are doing well. I want us to take a short reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 127. It says, if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will circle it in vain. It's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come to God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed, son. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. 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 of your heart. word according to Zechariah chapter 3 while the worship was going on I saw in my vision individuals and families and I saw garments garments that represented reproach this is what I saw being taken away from people some whole families Zechariah when you read Zechariah chapter 3 he said he showed me Joshua the high priest and Satan the accuser came and began to point an accusing finger and then he said, verse 2 says, The Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, O Satan. Even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand that I have plucked out of fire? And then verse 4, verse 3, he says, Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. Verse 4, and he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garment from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused your iniquity to pass from you, and I will clothe you with a change of raiment. Let me declare according to the vision the Lord showed me, there are families here that the garments that is upon you, 
is why the devil keeps taking advantage of you circles and patterns of pain and failure and shame you came to the house of the Lord this morning and in the name of Jesus Christ who is the son of the living God even the God of David we declare let there be a change of raiment now please be serious and receive it let it be from the depth of your heart and if there is anyone here the accuser of the brethren has been standing over your family standing over your destiny and declaring before the justice system of heaven that you have no rights to advance you have no right to rise because of something your father did because of something your mother did in the name help them please help that man in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare right now we plead the blood 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 the saving blood we plead the blood we plead the blood eternal saving blood i don't Hallelujah. I still sense in my spirit, I'm praying, you came to church. We're wrapping up. There are people here, there are voices of accusations against your family, ordinances of darkness that will not let you move forward. Again, I'm declaring, just help those under the anointing. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, there is an altar that is greater than any other altar. There is an altar where the blood of Jesus himself was shed. The handwritings and the ordinances. Can you bring them out please? The handwritings that have been written against men. Handwritings, handwritings against destinies. Handwritings that have been written against the breakthrough of people. To demand that you will not move forward writings ordinances in the name of jesus here at household of david again we come before this altar that is greater than any other ordinance or any other altar in the name of jesus let it be lifted right now please bring them out let it be lifted right now The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing graves opening like a coffin and dead bodies just coming out. This is what I'm seeing. I believe that this is a prophetic word for someone and a prophetic word for a family. Help this woman, my God. Can you help that man, please? Graves. I'm seeing graves opening. This is what I'm seeing and bodies coming out. I stand in the name of Jesus. Anyone appointed to death here, anyone already that from the realm of the spirit there are conclusions that have been made over your life over your family and all that concerns you in the name of jesus by the fire that comes from his throne let there be a miracle for you now baba I declare over this man you will not die i'm seeing this man inside a coffin i don't know who came with this man but in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god we declare leave now leave now leave now leave now leave now you see let me tell you something about god there are times when you provoke his presence and his power and then he just comes in the midst of his people just to rest upon them like a hand resting upon her eggs resting upon them this is what the lord is doing please be patient be patient 
garments. I'm still praying over this garment thing I'm seeing. Listen. The Bible says the hair of a woman is her glory. The Lord is opening my eyes. And I'm seeing people, there is no hair on their head. This is what I'm seeing. Of course, it's a prophetic thing. But the Lord is saying he's restoring. You know what happened to Samson? It's an adumbration of what can happen to men. As soon as they caught Samson, two things happened. Number one, they blocked his eyes, the symbol of vision. Number two, they removed his hair. I pray the glory upon anyone here. I'm telling you, I see fire falling on people. Please bring them. Anyone here, whether by divination or by any satanic means, the glory upon your family, the glory upon your life, exchange for shame. I stand here in the name of Jesus Christ. Please bring them out. Let there be a restoration now. Many of you will be surprised. Restoration now. For your shame, I declare, receive double, 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 in the name of Jesus. When the glory of a man is hidden, you can be around people who can give you jobs. And all you hear is excuses every day. You can be in the place of plenty and never experience the grace of God. Again, I'm praying for someone who came to church this morning. Everything that has stopped your glory from arising, I prophesy to you, according to Isaiah 60 and verse 1, Arise, Ketebakatabata, arise, shine, for your glory, the light has come to you, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Mama, this woman, waving her hands i'm seeing oil being poured upon her head and the lord is saying he's visiting your family help her please bring her out there is a visitation coming for that woman listen i want you to open your mouth in one minute and say lord by your mercy restore everything i have lost in my life just go ahead and pray lord restore lord restore oh there is a voice this morning that says restore 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 enough of shame, enough of reproach. Restore, oh God, the dignity and honor that comes with my connection to the God of David. Lord, restore. Are you praying? You have worshipped. Shates, kates, shates, kateya. Magapakata branda kata barakatos kate priyata. They are taken for a prey, and none say it restore. None say it restore. None say it restore. Shale de berentos kato brakata baratos. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing, I'm seeing, maybe not, I'm, I'm not sure it's the security people outside, but I'm, I'm seeing a vision, and I'm seeing a man, it's like you are dressed in, is it a military uniform with a red cap? Is there someone like that? There is somebody, God wants to remove witchcraft. Is there someone, maybe outside, you can check the overflows too. Where, is he com- where are you coming from, my friend? He was inside. What's your name, sir? Huh? Who is Kasim? What's your name? Kasim. Kasim. Come, stand here. The Lord wants to turn your family around. You are not alone. Who came with you? My wife. Your wife. I'm seeing a woman near you. Are you married? Yes, I'm married. Where is she? Come. Is there? Is there? Is she here? She went to breastfeed. She went to breastfeed. Oh, she went to breastfeed. Okay, that's all right. Please stand up. So I want to pray for you. Listen, let me tell you this. Truly there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. You see why it's good to come to the house of God? You may not know when your word will come. He sent forth his word. And his word healed them and delivered them. I want to pray for you. That everything that is not a planting of God. I hope you are not embarrassed sir. Is this the wife? 
Okay, this is just in the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, look at me. What do you do? Um, I do coding. coding. I want to pray for you. I thought you were a military man wearing this thing because this is what I saw in my vision. In the name of Jesus, I want to pray for you. Listen, everything that is an embargo over your life and even your family, we stand as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and we declare it comes to an end now. It comes to an end now. I'm seeing a vision. Acts. I'm seeing the vision of this man at the beautiful gate. This is what I'm seeing right now. And I believe that God wants to take away. There is a kind of reproach that is almost a mockery to the name of the Lord. You are close to good things, but you will never eat from them. This was the cause that came on the man who caused what God said in Samaria. Read the Bible. Right at the gate where he was going to step into plenty, they trampled on him and he died there. And there are people like that. They are around the corridors of power, but they never rise. They are around men of God, but they never receive a word that lifts them. They are around Christian homes, but they never are on fire. They are around destiny helpers, but they never rise. I'm seeing the number seven. I pray right now, if there is anyone who is under that kind of condition, where you are around things that should bless you, you are around people who should lift you and announce you, but it looks like there is a dark cloud over you that never allows people to identify you. Help this man. I'm seeing the power of God coming on him now. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Right now, may that reproach be rolled from your life. May that reproach be rolled from your life. Rolled from your life. Who is Dorcas? Dorcas. I'm hearing a name Dorcas. Is there someone like that here? Dorcas. Am I wasting your time this morning? You are members of this church? The one I'm seeing tied her head like red or maroon or something. This is the one I'm seeing. I will pray for you. Don't, don't feel embarrassed. Okay. Madam, you're welcome. What's your name, man? Dorcas, please stand here. The Lord wants to turn your life around. He says, you have turned my morning into dancing. And you have turned my sorrow into joy. Where are you coming from? Agege, sir. Huh? Agege. Okay. Lagos, Lagos, yeah. I want to pray for you. Please stand up, madam. Honestly, I stand by the God of heaven. What will begin to happen to your life from this Sunday? Uh, because this reproach you see, I don't know why God is addressing this issue of reproach. I am praying for you, ma'am. In the name of Jesus Christ, this garment I'm seeing on you, we tear it to pieces now. We tear it to pieces now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm praying for you, but I'm seeing the power of God falling on someone else. Bring the person now. Just this room. I just saw light and the power of God just falling on someone. Bring the person. I'm praying for a woman here, but I'm also seeing the miracle happening to someone. In the name that is above all names. Mama, we pray for you as a church move forward. Move forward by the Spirit of the Living God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please don't be embarrassed. I usually will not do this except that God is insisting that I do. There is a woman here. You've been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. But the issue is that you take him, but it never stays. This is multiple miscarriage. It's even affecting your health now. I have to pray for you. Where is that person? I hope you are not. Okay. How long have you been married, madam? I'm seeing. How many years? Ten. Ten years. Yes. No fruit of the womb. I keep taking in, but it never stays. You see, people of God, the reason why God reveals this thing is not to embarrass people. I hope you understand. Is to show this is the mercy of God. This is what we are talking about. There are things money cannot solve. Oh. Let me tell you sincerely. 
there are things intellect cannot solve. It takes the grace and the mercy of this God we are talking about. I will worship you forever. Love you forever. Because this God is to I will worship you. I believe in miracles. I really believe in miracles. I want to pray for you, all of you too. Don't cry. You see, we may never understand what it means to stay this long. And you know, because of the kind of country and the region that we live in, once something does not work in your life, what, what, even, what becomes the pain is not what is not working, is what people will say. Are we together now? On account of Hannah's childlessness, the Bible says Penina will mock her day and night until she went to God in Shiloh and said, Lord, this is, this is enough. So when a miracle happens like this, I told you, it's more than just showing that a man of God is powerful. God is stepping in to meet the needs of his people. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of the Living God, Madam, place your hand on your stomach. You, in Jesus' name, I stretch my hands. I decree and declare: reproach be over now. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, every devil of miscarriage that will not give you rest and allow you to enjoy, be fruitful is a command. It's not a suggestion. Be fruitful is a command. And any spirit, let me use them as a point of contact. Because fruitfulness is not just giving birth to children alone. You keep opening your shop in the morning, closing it by yourself in the night. It's, it's still barrenness. I use them as a point of contact. And in the name of Jesus, standing in faith with the angel over this house. Any life that has refused to produce results. In the name of Jesus, we reenact this command again. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. In the name of Jesus. My sister, I decree and declare, lay your hands. I'm seeing the power of God on you. You see, the thing about the prophetic is you just walk as the Holy Spirit conference i came i prophesied at the last at conference. The time of life i should come back with my baby and for the past three years and nine months i've never been pregnant and i got pregnant like about 10 days after you know two weeks ago i went for a scan and the doctor said that they couldn't find the baby that I should go for another scan so i went for another scan and they said they could find the baby Friday, thursday i went back to the hospital because they asked for a follow-up the doctor said blighted ovum. I went for transvaginal scan and they said they can't find any baby. I, I didn't go back to the hospital. I said, God, this is not. Oh, you are supposed word. to be pregnant now. I am still pregnant. Oh, you are pregnant. In Jesus' name, yes. Lay your hands there. This is why we are here. I mean, lay your hands. This is. Hold on. When your chair spoils, who do you go to? When you are sick, who do you go to? When you are hungry, where do you go to? The house of God is where these kinds of issues should be solved. You don't go to the hospital when you are hungry. You go to a restaurant. Father, I pray in the open over this lady. You have given us the grace. Baby, leave now. Baby, leave now. Everything dead in anyone's life here. In the name of Jesus. By that power that raised Christ from the dead. I declare may that resurrection power land upon your destiny now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Listen. We are not negating medicine. 
but at the same time we will not ignore the power of God there is something called the power of God hallelujah Mary said how shall these things be seeing that I know not a man and the angel explained to her he said the power of the highest that means the way you know to do it is not the only way to do it there is still another strategy the power of the highest madam lay your hands anything in your stomach that is not a child we take it out now i'm praying again anything in your stomach that is not a child doesn't matter what name it is called we stand here as a family of faith and we declare let that devil leave your body now and according to the time of life we declare unto you in jesus name may you celebrate the miracle of fruitfulness for my sister here i also pray for you in the name of jesus celebrate the miracle of fruitfulness in jesus name i pray in jesus name i pray in jesus name i pray god bless you i i honestly i don't know what dimension god is but I, is it all right can i can i feel free to just do what god is asking me to do there i'm seeing at least four people don't be embarrassed you are business people sincerely you love god and you are serious business people i don't just mean people who are looking for money it looks like you are sitting there is an embargo and it looks like mysteriously this year has been one of the worst seasons for you for reasons you cannot explain please come and stand here i want to pray for you i saw this in my vision and the lord wants me to pray for you now these are not just people who are starting please listen to the prophecy or your obedience to instructions don't be embarrassed this is the house of god While they are coming, everyone, please pray. Father, my visitation. I have come. I have tabernacled in this place. In the name of Jesus. Please come and stand here. Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty hand and part of life in your hands. His majesty is there. Majesty. anybody that tells you the church should not prosper is a doctrine of demons what we teach is that we don't place our faith on prosperity and money as against our love for jesus nothing should ever take his place in our lives but to advocate the fact that god's people should not be blessed is signing up with slavery the bible says the rich ruled over the poor and the borrower is slave to the lender there is, a, there is a way that believers across a territory become slaves. It's through economy. Are we together now? We must teach the whole counsel of God. The whole counsel of God. Even before God gave man an instruction to be serious with him, he said, be fruitful. That was the first thing man had from the, the mouth of the Lord. I'm saying this because sometimes when you see us do things like this, we can confuse it for some carnal thing that people do and just feel there are more serious things to talk about. Talk about salvation. Don't talk about their empowerment. It's wickedness to watch people love God and go down and their children. Every time there is hunger, Israel goes to Egypt. There is only one reason why Israel goes to Egypt. Hunger. When there was famine and there was hunger, the Bible says Jacob called his sons and said, Why do you look at one another? Genesis chapter 42. It says, 
I hear that there is corn in Egypt. He says, go down thither and buy for us that we may eat, live and not die. Believers have no business going down to Egypt. But when there is hunger and you hear that only Egypt has bread, even if you are a prophet, you will send your children to Egypt. Hallelujah. Number two, the empowerment of the people within a ministry and within the body is how God provides financial resources for kingdom activities. There's no need to hide it. There's no need to act as if the money is just jumping from the sky. It comes from people who have been blessed by God. That means that if the devil wants to frustrate the advancement of the kingdom, he will cripple economy in the hands of those who have a heart to give it. Listen, believe me when I tell you there is a grace that prospers. Yes. There are ideas... There are all kinds of things. There are connections. It is true. But in this kingdom, there is a grace that prospers. Many of you are in business. Some of you are veterans in business. But the devil is fighting you not because of what you do, but because of the heart for God that is connected to what you do. He knows that in your prosperity is the prosperity of the house of God. So he will not let you rest. Bring you to reproach so that people will say, where is that your God now? Since you refuse to compromise, where is that your God now? Answer them and say, He's still here. God is still here. I want to pray for you. You came to church. Don't cry. You see some of you crying because you know the pain that you've gone through. Everything is increasing except your own resources. How many pastors today have left the things of God because of hunger. And it's easy for us to judge people and point fingers at people and say this and that. This is why we're discussing a messy conference. Are we together now? Yes. A man of God will never truly be able to stand on stage and teach and preach and help people know Jesus. His children are in trouble. There's no fees paid. Maybe there's rent. There's all kinds of issues. He would not have that focus to do the work of the ministry. I want you to believe there is such an anointing that will come on you. Listen, the only thing I would tell you is may your heart never be on your money. When your heart is on your money, it's no longer business. It's idolatry. When your heart is on anything other than Jesus Christ, this is the only thing that we teach. Anything God gives you, let it stay out of you. The only thing that should be within you is your heart and your passion and your fire for God. Father, you have anointed and commanded us to bless. In Jesus' name, I pray for you. There is such an anointing that will come on you people now. At the count of three, Lord, may this anointing bring supernatural abatis. One, two, Three, take that fire now. Take that fire. I declare it on your business, on your life. Carry this fire. I prophesy to you every door that has refused to open. Hear the word of the Lord. I decree and declare by the rod of a higher priesthood. We break that door and we open it now for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you here are having legal cases, legal issues connected to your business we overturn we overturn we overturn until the mercy of god speaks for you in the name of jesus and everything connected to witchcraft that is keeping you bound to say the only way you will eat is by begging in the name of jesus we crush that spirit now help this woman i cast that spirit out of her now out of her now I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. You see people just going through things you may not understand what is behind what they are doing. Sir, where are you from? I want to pray for you. You're, in, you're a businessman. What do you do? Huh? I'm seeing buildings. What do you do? Please just give me, let's hurry up. Let's do that one. Huh? 
project management you're, and contracting. You are a contractor. Yeah. I want to pray for you because I'm hearing restoration for you. This is what the Lord is telling me that He's bringing restoration. Sir, name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God. I'm not a prophet of doom. Don't misquote me for evil. But we rebuke death over a commissioner in this city, in Lagos State. And I just saw an obituary. And it's like someone who is, I don't know if he's a past commissioner or somebody who is a serving. I hope there's no one here like that. Um, don't misunderstand. We need to be clarifying things like this because some of these social media people sometimes, they don't join the service so they don't even know what we're talking about. They just capture everything that looks like it can drive traffic and mislead people and make it look like you are saying what you're not saying. We are ministers of life. And do you understand what we're saying? We are ministers of life. So when God gives a message like this, we are not prophesying doom. No. We are ministering life. It's only a system of identifying and relating with what the Lord is saying. So I'm saying this so that we, we be careful. Let's not keep putting the body of Christ and men of God in trouble by misrepresenting what they are saying. It's important to understand the context with which many communications were made and discuss it correctly. But in the name of Jesus, we agree as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. If the Lord revealed it, it's because He has given us the power to do something about it. Let death be averted now. Let death be averted now. Let death be averted now. Oh, death, where is your sting? And oh, grave, where is your victory? We avert it in the name of Jesus Christ. And so I pray for you as God has revealed, let there be restoration for you. In the name of Jesus, weep not for the lion of the tribe of Judah. Even the root of David has prevailed. He is worthy to open the book and to unlock the scrolls. In the name of Jesus, go and excel. Go and prosper. Go and excel. Go and prosper. Go and excel. Help this man. Go and prosper. We release you. The shame of yesterday. Let it never follow you into tomorrow. Here at this higher ground conference, you will never forget it in a long time. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please return back to your seat rejoicing. God bless you. Return back to your seat rejoicing. Return back to your seat rejoicing. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a family. Please be patient. If, if this is all I do, no problem. I'm just obeying God and responding. I'm seeing a family where the children in that family hardly finish what they start. This has to do with academic issues like admission or graduation. People are there for a long time. No advancement. Is there a family like that? The Lord is instructing me to pray for you. Please make sure you are telling the truth. This is, this is God's holy altar. Don't call me and tell lies. Make sure you think about what we are saying before you come. If you are standing in for someone, let us know. Please, if you belong to that category, I want you to stand here. Pastor, is it, is it okay? Is it okay to minister to you? Moses, tell the people that they go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Whilst you are standing here, please be praying. If you are the one who is directly affected, I'd like you to pray. Because it's time for you to move. That spirit lifts her out. Now! Out! In the name of Jesus Christ. Sometimes it's not about being dull or being brilliant. It's just that certain people are victims of some of these evil demonic things. Do you know? I had a true story, sir. A man of God in this nation was giving the story. There was a gentleman, one of the brightest within a family. He went for a job interview. Very serious company. In the, midst of, in the middle of the, the interview, he forgot every information. His registration number that he came with. Simple questions they were asking him. And the guy, it was as if his mind was blank. And in anger, they told him, get out of here, you're not serious. That's how he lost the job. When he came out, it's like what was on him just lifted. 
sometimes this is what may be happening to people you see this is why many times parents must be discerning it's not everybody who is on serious there are times that these things are just demonic look how many people are coming out for this call come out oh if you have this problem don't sit back there and be in trouble I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. We call you when In the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We call you. Waymaker, miracle walker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Please look at me, those in front here. The Lord brought you out here at this mercy conference because there is the sure message of David. It does not matter how it has been. I want you to know that things are about to change. Yes. Hallelujah. Why does God call you? Number one, because He loves you. Number two, He wants to show you that His messes are real. Weep not, dear ones, for the lion of the tribe of Judah even the root of David has prevailed. I know some of you are standing in for yourselves. Some of you are standing in for your loved ones. But I want to pray. There is something called the finisher's anointing. He said the hand of Zerubbabel that began that work, that same hand can complete it. And I want to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus here at household of David, We pray, whether it is for students or people in projects that doesn't seem to be able to finish. Right now, every power that is responsible for this wickedness and this evil against your life, against your academics, we command them, go now! Go now! Go now! Go now! Go now! Go now. Go now. Out of their lives, out of their destinies, out of their lives, out of their destinies. In the name of Jesus, by the blood of the eternal covenant, we cut you away from any time that will not let you go. He must go for you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And now I decree and I declare over you, in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the living God, hear me, go forward now. Go forward now. I place that prophetic word upon your head. Let it follow you in the morning. Let it follow you in the afternoon. Let it follow you in the night. Let it follow you in the city. Let it follow you in the village. Go forward. Go forward. Academically. Go forward. In your career. Go forward. And everything you've started. And yet you've not been able to finish. I place the finisher's anointing upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where you have failed and failed and failed. He said, Master, we have toiled all night. But he said, nevertheless, I decree and declare at this word that has come from the mouth of God, go back to what you were doing and excel. Go back and finish. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please return quickly. Just return rejoicing.
Just return rejoicing. Those under the anointing, just help them. Just two more cases. Something serious God is ministering to me. Now, we're dealing with the mercy of God. Look up, please. I want to pray for people here. Um, I, I would not do this except that God is leading me. And I don't want you to be embarrassed. Are we together? I'm praying. There are people here, some of you are new people who are coming here. And the Lord is asking that I minister to you. This is the house of God. All kinds of addictions that want to destroy you. Don't be embarrassed. All kinds. Doesn't mean you are bad. There are people here who are struggling with all kinds of addictions. You have tried. You have prayed. You have fasted. You have done everything you know to do. It just will not leave you. You need the power of God. Please don't be embarrassed. Any kind of addiction you are tired of, run and come and stand before God here. There's no need pretending it. Run like there's fire on the mountain. Stand before God and say it must come to an end. I'm tired of this thing. Once and for all. While they are coming, everyone, please be in the mood of prayer. Let's pray. There's no looking around. Just pray. This is between you and your maker. I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours. Come, no matter how far, come. My life is yours. It's yours. It's yours forever. Pornography, masturbation, drunkenness, theft, all kinds of things, lying spirit. Come. Please come. I just sense there is fire falling here. Let's just allow the Lord to deal with these issues. I'm telling you again, don't sit back when there is salvation for you. There's no such thing as I'm a big man. Listen, we are all products of God's mercy. We are all products of God's mercy. And those of you following online from whatever nation, you are saying, Apostle, thank you for bringing this issue. I am tired of all of this. Some of you, there is nothing you cannot steal. Provided it is there, you if the demons walk like giving you word of knowledge, even if they hide money under under the carpets, you will, you, they will tell you where it is. It's a spirit. It doesn't always mean you are bad. It's just that you need help. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask, I surrender. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. I surrender. Hallelujah. Can I tell you this? I don't mean any condemnation, but you get ten people. Eight out of ten people have some kind of addiction that they are fighting with. But we live in a society where when people are wounded like this, everybody is quick to point hands and yet nobody prays. Some of these things are wicked, satanic, demonic altars that sit on the destinies of men. Because there are spiritual implications to these things. I want to pray for you. There is a fountain filled blood that flows. Hallelujah. Please look at me. The power of God, I tell you, I sense such 
such a demonic presence as I'm standing here like intense oppression this presence that I sense there are some of you sometimes you are in the room alone and this demonic presence just comes on you a crippling paralyzing feeling you just know there are demons around spirits around at that point you are not yourself again you know what I'm talking about I want to pray for you Help them. Yeshua Now in the name of Jesus, lift your hands, all of you who have come out. Every spirit, parakatos I tell you, I'm angry in my spirit, man, that is responsible for any kind and any form of addiction that will not let you rest, young and old, at the count of three, may fire come from heaven and consume those devils forever. One, two, three. Take that fire. Take that fire. Take that fire. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Every addiction comes under arrest. Comes under judgment. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please help them. Every dominion of addiction over your life destroying your Christian experience, destroying your relationships, destroying your finances, here at this higher ground conference, I declare again, the spirits behind it, I cast them out of you now. I cast them out of you now. I cast them I cast them out of you now. From today and forever, we declare as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are free now. Amen. Free to serve the Lord acceptably. Amen. Free to serve the Lord with sincerity. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And let me speak to you. As a result of these demonic addictions, many of you have lost many good things. You have lost destiny helpers. You have lost resources. You have lost opportunities. But can I prophesy to you? Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Hey, everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be returned One more time. Prophesy not to them. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be returned unto me. Just help those under the anointing. And I pray for you. Even as we sang it, my friend, look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. This gentleman, go ahead. Just do what I say. In the name of Jesus Christ. For some of you, this addiction is a pattern. Everybody, father, mother, siblings, everyone. Some of you may be in ministry, but this thing has not left you. Some of you may be in business, but this thing has not left you. Even as we have declared here, you will never see it again for the rest of you. 
you will never see it again for the rest of your life. Everything God gives man, he gives man authority over it and control. Whatever controls you and dominates you is demonic. If God gives you the ability to make money so that you can use it for yourself and for the kingdom, the day money dominates you, you are no longer in business. It has become an addiction. It has become idolatry. Everything God gives man, he puts it under control. Good things without control are evil things. It is the control factor that makes everything good. No matter how good a thing is, the moment there is no control, it becomes demonic. Hallelujah. Can I tell you this? And as I'm ministering to you, every lie the devil has spoken to you, that you will never rise as a result of these things. In the name of Jesus, let the blood purify your conscience. Let the blood of Jesus purify your conscience. The Bible says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. It says, but if we confess our sins that God is faithful and just to forgive us from our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is what the scripture says. I declare to you your conscience, let it be purified by the blood. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please return to your seat rejoicing. One more set. And then, those under the anointing, just let them be when they are strong, we'll pick them up. Is God helping you? Hallelujah. Let's, let's just allow them go so that I'll minister to the last set of people that the Lord is putting in my heart. The Lord is showing me, I'm seeing, well, I, I'm sure that it may be more than that, but I'm seeing two people almost every night you sleep you must see dead people like people who have died and gone but they will not let you rest you, once you go to bed this interaction with dead people dead people who is that person i want to pray for you what does the living have to do with the dead i don't care whether it's your father or your mother and i'm not we're not just talking of saints that have been perfected maybe bringing revelations You know, pastors are sometimes sincerely God's people go through things and just keep quiet and box it and suffer and keep dying like that. This does not happen every time. If you have a service and this is all you do, people will not grow. I hope you understand. It is a communication of doctrine that establishes people and brings growth. However, there are moments where God will just stay and bring visitations to His people. So that it can give them the comfort to now listen to scripture. You have tabernacle in this mountain from Thursday, was it Friday? Listening doctrine after doctrine, truth after truth. Now it's important to experience the power of God. Come. See, if the dead die, they are dead. We love them, but let them go in peace. But where demons will use their faces to come to you because of your emotional connection with the dead. You see that? Most of those people you think are your loved ones are not your loved ones. Because the Bible says, according to the authority of scripture, it is appointed unto men to die once. And after that, the judgment. There is a gulf that separates this realm from another. There have been unique instances as revealed from scripture where people have an opportunity. It's rather an exemption, not a norm. Are we together? Remember when Lazarus prayed, the, the, the rich man prayed and said, Okay, Father Abraham, I have a request. Can you bring someone from the dead to come? He said, No, they have the law and they have the prophets. He didn't say, I will not grant the request. It only said that the major platform is that there are principles of scripture and there are men and women of God, they suffice to teach them doctrine. So some of these things that people call encounters all the time are demonic interactions. A man can, I believe in encounters, but the principal encounter is an encounter with scripture. 
and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture we must restore god's people to doctrine so that we don't get into all these various confusions there are young people today who do not even know whether jesus is savior again because they've met too many spirits in the realm of the spirit every night they are somewhere one planet one place like that and they return back with all kinds of evil encounters they are not pure christians again hallelujah dead people i know a lady one time who would see the face of supposedly her mother not when she's sleeping physically kill yourself or kill your and she started misbehaving and people will start seeing all kinds of things misbehaving have you seen people like that they get up and just start walking maybe to a sea or a river and they tell you someone is instructing them strange voices the bible says when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you you know he's the one guiding you because he guides you to all truth and then in that truth he reveals jesus any spirit that does not reveal jesus is not of the christ and let me respectfully say this i hope i'm not i i hope you don't feel insulted again let's be careful the kinds of materials and references that we expose ourselves to in a bid to search for revelation and rema many people do not yet have the kind of spiritual maturity that can allow them delve into extra biblical materials they don't have the spiritual stability for that now many people go and buy all kinds of books expose themselves to all kinds of videos in the internet and receive impartations of strange spirits we have to guard these things i commend you to god and to the word of his grace the bible says is that true it is god and then the word let me pray for you now father every communication help her please every communication with the dead dead spirits it is the grave calling you or sometimes that woman who is near this gentleman i command that spirit that coffin out now of her life in the name of jesus i speak anyone here who has an embargo of the spirit of death looking for you where is your sting we come as the ministers of life oh grave where is your victory in the name of jesus the one who has been exalted both as lord and christ we take authority right now in the name of jesus and we declare liberty for you now liberty for you now i separate you from every demonic encounter with dead spirits in the name of jesus christ not in dreams not in visions they will never come to you again for your loved ones who have died those who have died in christ in the name of jesus we thank god because they are celebrating in heaven but anybody who wants to leave the realm of the spirit and tamper with your efficiency in this life in the name that is above all things we declare your eyes blind to their impulses and all the spirits that come to visit and disturb your sleep the bible says i lay me down and i slept i waked for the lord sustain me therefore i declare help this woman everything because the lord is revealing to me there are some of help this woman are, are you seeing what we're talking about they don't sleep oh they go to sleep and here comes this wicked evil spirit i'm praying again in the name of jesus this woman wearing green let that spirit leave her now out now in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare by the power that raised christ from the dead look at me my dear stand up stand up can i tell you this what you have is not just sleep apnea it's a demonic thing these spirits that will not let you sleep not let you rest if you dare wake up in the night no sleep again do you know sleep is a gift he gives his beloved one of the ways that god shows you he loves you is not just salvation is sleep the only person who does not sleep is the keeper of israel if you don't sleep as a human being you will die 
doctors are here. No matter how hard working you are, you must sleep. The inability to sleep is a cause. When Jesus was a man, did he sleep? Yes, sir. Remember when they were going to the other side where they will meet um, at the, the, gather, the land of the gatherings? He was sleeping. The demons come to disturb him. No. As my father has sent me, so sent I you. In the name of Jesus, again, I pray for you. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, every interaction you have with demon spirits that will not let you rest, coming to you to interrupt sleep, just when you return tired, some of you even sleep, but you wake up in the morning more tired than you were when you slept. Have you, have you had that kind of thing? That you go to bed and all kinds of demonic dreams. You wake up with the pain you had in this. Sleep is for rest. Anyone having such experiences. We come against that spirit right now. 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 now. And in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God. I release you right now. Help that Baba, my God. God has been bringing deliverance to this man. May God bless whoever invited this man to this church. Whose, whose father is this or whose uncle or so? Baba, God, God bless you. You see why it's good to invite people to church? One encounter, you will give them what a million dollars cannot give. You see what God has been doing in the life of this, our father and our uncle. Not inviting people to church is wickedness. It's not just lack of spirituality. Because it means you do not care about their growth. One encounter can save them. I'm sorry for sounding mean, but it's true. Some of these people now were invited. And may God bless those who invited them. And you too, now that they've invited you, you will invite others too. So that there never is an empty space. As far as a soul to be saved, to be healed, to be delivered is concerned. In Jesus name enjoy your freedom my friend look at me shout Jesus this man wearing suit please go back to your seat God bless you what is that don't worry just give the ushers God bless you my dear thank you hallelujah I will share one scripture. Don't worry. We'll open the Bible for even if it's 10 minutes. I, with this fire that is here, can I make an altar call? Please look up, everyone. You strike the iron when it is hot. Is that true? Yes. When it is hot, you strike the iron. That's how you bend it. There are people here in this very holy and powerful atmosphere. The Holy Spirit, whilst you watch what's happening, that in itself was a message for you. And God is speaking to you and saying that your life, for you what you need, the first encounter with God's mercy is that which leads to your salvation. Whether you are giving your life to Jesus for the first time, or you are saying apostle sincerely, all through the course of the conference, or just coming here um, as a first invitation, you are saying, I know that I need to make things right with Jesus and I heard you made an altar call the last time I was not privileged to come or I was there but I had not thought about it right now before I share one scripture and then we'll pray I want you wherever you are outside the overflows please leave your seat for the sake of Jesus for the sake of your children and your children's children with every sense of honor like you are coming to receive an award Walk here. Come and stand here. Please. Let's celebrate them. Now, please, make sure you, if there is anything valuable you have, please come with it. Don't leave any valuable thing behind when there is nobody there with you. Can we encourage them as they come? Young and old together, please come. Please come. Please come. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always be you, Jesus. I don't believe this is all of them. There are many more people coming. Inside, outside. Stand up, win the war. Come. 
Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Let him give you a new beginning. Is someone coming to Jesus? Apostle, I want to come, but I came with my friends. They would not allow me to come. What kind of friends are those? Leave them alone and come in the name of Jesus Christ. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm not sure if I'm saved. Join them if you are not sure. Join them if you are not sure. God bless you. Please, if you are coming, just double up, come. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. Hallelujah. Apostle, I'm not a bad person, but I'm an idol worshiper. Join them. Join them. Join them. There is no other thing under heaven given unto men by which we must be saved. Apostle, I love Jesus, but I mix it with other things. Join them. Join them. Let's celebrate them as they come. There is nothing like you add Jesus and add another thing. Jesus and a charm. Jesus and one, one arrow that was given to you somewhere. Join them. Receive genuine salvation. Gideon said, why have we not seen the power of God? The way it is, he said, this, there are idols. You destroy it. Please come. Please come. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. I salute you for this great decision. It is a noble and an honorable thing to come to Jesus. Can I tell you, if this entire conference was put just for you, it is worth it. Nothing compares to one genuine soul who meets Jesus Christ. The hymn writer says, Must I go an empty handed? with not one soul with which to greet him. When you are going to greet the Lord, you don't buy a fruit basket. You don't buy bananas and oranges. What you carry to greet him are souls. These are the ones you died for. And I want to salute you for coming. Some of you are making this decision the first time. Some of you have made this decision before. But one thing led to the other, your life has gone haywire. Jesus is giving you another opportunity. I want to pray now. If you are joining them, please join quickly. Join quickly. I want to pray. In case you are sitting down and you just thought about it and you are saying, Do I stand up? Am I not ashamed? Come. Run. Join them. Please lift your hands, those of you who are in front. You are lifting it to Jesus, not to Joshua Selma, not to household of David. You are lifting it to the one who died for us. When he hung upon that tree, he hung naked and he died for us. We were worth his shame we were worth his pain jesus even the son of the living god as you make this declaration let it be from the depth of your heart no pretense mean it jesus is here please shout it loud let it be from the depth of your heart say lord jesus today i believe in you that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification. This morning, I hand over my everything to you in exchange for your own life in me. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare you my Lord, my Savior, and my King. I receive the abundance of grace, even the gift of righteousness, and I reign through Christ. The power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From today, I walk in newness of life. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen keep your hands lifted please father we thank you and we love you such an honor again 
to receive this harvest those who have come to jesus they have come truly to acknowledge and to declare your lordship you are able to save to the uttermost by the authority of scripture i declare unto you every one of you standing here that your sins are forgiven and in the name of jesus we declare that you are recipients of this life of god the power to live above sin satan hell the grave that power is released upon you i commend you to the ministry of the holy spirit and the ministry of the word may you be built and established in righteousness in jesus name i pray amen and amen again like we did yesterday please i'd like you to turn back there is a, an official who is holding the new convert placard please just follow them let's celebrate them follow them they will just talk with you briefly and you'll be back to your seat briefly and you'll be back to your seat can you spare me five minutes let me just charge us with a scripture my god i couldn't even share what i came here to share again hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16 let's let's just even if it's just to touch it and then to declare i was glad when they said unto me has god blessed someone today it says let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy everybody say obtain mercy another word for obtain mercy is receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need there are three words that i would have discussed number one is obtain mercy that mercy is a gift it's a gift that can be received it's a gift that can be rejected number two the bible says there is a point and a period in a man's life called the time of need the time of need what time is that in a man's life that the bible calls the time of need and then number three the bible tells you where both mercy and grace resides it says the throne the throne when you come boldly before the throne you encounter mercy you encounter grace that helps in time of need what is the time of need the time of need is any time you are buffeted by and with situations and circumstances that defy the word of god in your life the moment of sickness is a time of need the moment of frustration is a time of need the moment of spiritual degradation is a time of need listen carefully the moment of prayerlessness is a time of need the moment of national chaos is a time of need the moment of an onslaught of attacks from all kinds of spirits is a time of need he says to come before the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy to receive mercy when you come no matter what your prayer request is god answers you by giving you mercy and giving you grace it's amazing are we together now now some of you have children and it will soon be december and even though they don't do it so much again there's what they call father christmas that man that sits down whoever it is just wears a regalia and he has all kinds of gifts is that true some maybe ball all these glasses that children use during christmas this spider-man kind of glasses they have all kinds of gifts now as soon as they come to greet him there is a reward he gives to them and then they pass through the other door there are others who don't even care about him they walk straight to the gift they first direct them to him is that true he's the one who gives it just because you see where it is does not mean you pick it they come and they greet him he smiles with them and he picks it and gives to them sometimes they give the children and they cry that they don't like what they were given because their eyes are on something else but here is a scripture that blesses us i just use that as an example that every time there is need when you come to jesus before the throne he does not have so many things he gives you the only thing he will give you regardless the need is mercy and then when you obtain mercy he will say take grace to go it is done this is a powerful mystery so for those who are sick when you come to the throne 
Lord, I am sick. It's not really healing that He gives you. He gives you mercy and then He gives you grace. And as you go, just like water was turned to wine, the mercy, the grace now is interpreted as healing. For those who feel ministry is not going, I'm not doing anything, that is a time of need. And when you come before Him, God does not give you strategies. You think you receive strategy, but what you really received is mercy and then grace that helps you. It helps you by now becoming what you are really looking for. That mercy and grace can translate into wisdom and now bring you direction. That mercy and grace can translate into ideas that bring wealth. So the Bible leaves us with an instruction. The first thing you need to ask is, am I in a time of need? If you are not in a time of need, you don't have any business with the throne. But when you have this season in your life called the time of need, the Bible says to come boldly with confidence, knowing that there is a covenant. Remember our discussion yesterday? Knowing that there is a covenant. A covenant that binds you and God. A covenant that insists that you do not fall, you do not falter, you don't fail. It is called the sure message of David. And here Paul is teaching the, church, the Hebrew church, let us, not let me. So this blessing is not for priests. This blessing is not for men of God. This blessing is for everyone. Let us therefore, in conclusion, learn to come boldly to the throne and that we will obtain mercy. The first thing you obtain from God is mercy. Mercy. When you obtain mercy, then you will find grace. That means grace remains missing until mercy opens your eyes to see it. Are we together now? The Bible did not say obtain grace. It says find grace. So mercy is like, is like a, a, a Google that you wear and then you will find grace. This scripture was adumbrated in the life of Hagar when she left Abraham. Is that true? When she was banished, Hagar and Ishmael, she was in the desert. There was an oasis there to quench her thirst, but she could not see it. And the Bible says she cried unto God and the young lad cried. Interestingly, God had only the voice of the young lad. Why? Because the young lad was connected to Abraham and there was a covenant. So it was a covenant that God had, not just the voice of the baby. A baby cries, an adult cries. God only hears the baby. And now he comes and says, Hagar, what is it? And he says, she ran away from her mistress, etc., etc. And then he now says she should go back and submit to her mistress and she will prosper. And then, as a result of that encounter, she found mercy. And all of a sudden, she saw an oasis, grace, that she went and got water, even in the wilderness. The same thing happened with Abraham himself. There was a lamb there, and yet he could not see it. But when he obtained mercy, he says, look, and he found it. One of the things that the mercy of God does is to open the door for you to find grace. If the mercy of God is not administered in your life, you may never find grace. I wish I had the time to teach what I, I had planned teaching this morning. I would have taken you to the book of Revelations 5 and I would have shown you something very powerful there. But my, my charge as we pray, our time is gone, is that every time there is a time of need in your life, for some of you now is that time of need. There's all kinds of catastrophe around your life. There's all kinds of financial needs, spiritual needs, all kinds of needs. The moment you find out that you are in a time of need, please leave it for us again, Hebrews chapter 4. That's my final charge. The moment there is a time of need in your life, the Bible says to come boldly before the throne of grace. What do you do? Receive that gift of mercy. Bound by a covenant, but it is a gift to you. And every gift must be received to work for you. I can give you something and you can reject it. Jesus offers the gift of himself. The Holy Spirit offers the gift of himself. God offers the gift of his mercy. He says to obtain mercy. 
when you obtain mercy you can find grace grace that manifests as wisdom grace that manifests as speed grace that manifests as greater anointing grace that manifests as all kinds of things and i promised us that we're going to wrap up with an impartation our time is up i'll just speak over our lives but it is because of this time of need that men like david sought god they understood that every time you are in a time of need you would see david oh lord you are my god see psalm 63 early will i seek you my heart that is the time of need my soul longs for you it says my 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 soul thirsts for you to see your power and your glory as i have seen in the sanctuary psalm 89 when you read from verse 20 21 down to 24 it says i have found my servant david i found him it says and with my holy oil have i anointed him he came to me declaring his need he found mercy but mercy was not where he stopped him. mercy opened the door for him to find this grace called the anointing and it says verse 21 it says with whom my hand shall be established my arm also shall strengthen him it says verse 22 now the enemy shall not exact upon him why he has obtained mercy he has found grace nor the son of wickedness afflict him 23 i will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him next verse but my faithfulness and my my faithfulness and my shall be with him and as a result in my name shall his horn be exalted this was where my message would have come from that the covenant of mercy is also the covenant of dominion he says worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for us and then there was a weeping i wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll and then he says weep not for the lion of the tribe of judah the root of david had prevailed and i looked upon a throne and he said i saw a lamb as though it had been slain having seven horns there is dominion connected to mercy by being slain he had seven horns perfect authority mercy and is grace every constituent that only the christ can produce is called grace please listen you have to understand this i define grace as every good and perfect gift that comes from above so spiritual blessings from above heavenly places but routed only in Christ. Now, the difference between grace and every other thing is that grace can only be obtained in Christ. An angel cannot be the basis for grace. Are we together now? Yes. Christ is the epicenter. Listen carefully. Now, grace is very powerful when it is taught correctly. That means if grace cannot if that reality is not captured in the christ you don't there's no point seeking it it's not available so before you ever begin to think of the possibility of receiving and working in any reality your first assignment is to find out whether the grace of god has made that reality available and the way you know is to find out whether the christ his person jesus the door does he lead you to that possibility jesus said i am the way i am the truth i am life he said many things about himself he also said i am the door not just the good shepherd not just the bread are we together now so the grace of god is the basis for availability of anything the grace of god has in it the possibility for a man to be anointed that is why we can press for the anointing the grace of god makes his prosperity available the grace of god makes his righteousness available listen the grace of god makes access into the mind of god access into the gifts of the spirit available 
this is the correct and balanced communication of grace so you approach the grace of god as a summation the holistic picture of every spiritual privilege that only the office of the christ can provide you cannot route the grace of god through any other formula that does not mean you cannot receive through any other formula you can but if it must be by grace it has to be in christ <laughs> he had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places so we are no longer in confusion as to the fact that we are blessed listen we just finished a series on spiritual stability and the goal was to help our convictions to be unbending meaning if anyone gets up now no matter how well meaning and indoctrinates you and makes you feel like there is nothing in store for you in christ you will respectfully know that as powerful as this is is an error because the bible declare that he had blessed us with all spiritual blessings now the next question becomes why then because you see listen I hope you know that you are intrinsically a spirit this is very basic tonight but don't trivialize it at all say I am a spirit not I have a spirit if you say you have a spirit you are wrong you are a spirit are we together now yes that spirit is domiciled in a body according to the law of territory if you are in the realm of the spirit you don't need a physical body are we together your spirit body is sufficient for the spiritual climate but if you are in this physical realm it was so designed that you must have a material body not necessarily a mortal body but a material body a body that is made out of the material of the earth so that you can be compatible with the environment that's why God made man from the elements of the earth when Bible says God made man from the dust is a generic statement it doesn't mean God used mud it means he sourced the instrument of our physical configuration from the same elements so you can look at man and see similitudes of the things in man in creation for instance the bones of man are in the similitude of rocks that's why they don't decay a man can die and his bones can be there for a thousand years just like a rock can remain you see the hair of man you see it in the similitude of grass you can cut grass it can grow back your hair so it means god made man he sourced the material for your physical frame from the environment that's why the environment should not hurt you because you are compatible if your environment hurts you then it means something else is playing out are you getting what i'm saying now it's called the law of territory so when the word wanted to become flesh he needed to come in the similitude of a material body that was compatible to the territory where he was going to come and die if jesus was going to die in venus the planet venus he would find out thank god he is the wisdom of god he would have to reconfigure himself in the similitude of that that's the reason why when angels every time angels were to come to the earth they would either remain in the realm of the spirit and by the supply of the spirit they cause the eye of an individual on earth who is also a spirit to see beyond the three-dimensional realm then the angel can now communicate to you are we together now or the angel assumes a material body is a privilege that the angels have they can translate themselves and assume bodies and then come into your realm and at that point you will not need to see a vision again they can walk like you you can now use your natural eyes you can never see spiritual things with your natural eyes now if you think you saw it with your natural eyes it's just the interpretation of your mind i hope you know that you you don't see with your eyes <laughs> look at this shut down a man's brain keep his eyes open will he be seen you see through your eyes you see your eyes is the window that your spirit looks through 
but what processes that image is not this that's why if you read in the book of acts paul was blind yet he was still seeing visions that's why blind people can still be productive because what is responsible for imagery is not the eyes is the mind are we together now so the bible tells us that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places but the challenge now is that as you've always heard me say it here once it is true that we do not seek god because of tea and bread and money and fame and prestige all of these things are not and never will be the basis of loving and seeking god but god so designed this kingdom such that as you genuinely seek him listen very carefully all of these privileges and these blessings because remember he designed them and he designed them to be the support system for your serving him is that true that means that i will serve god effectively if i say i designed something to support you it means that you may you may not necessarily die without it but you will not be effective without it are we together now many believers are getting frustrated and this is the reason my message starts now they are aware because this is the word of god that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places but the frustration is beginning to grow how long do i have to wait how do i know whether something is faith or demonic or that i'm not obeying something because it looks like the time that we are waiting for that which has been resident in heavenly places to find expression when a woman gets pregnant she doesn't expect to give birth in two weeks but she also doesn't expect to be pregnant forever is that true she knows that there is a period of conception and she gladly she may not know the particular day the doctors can approximate intelligently but she knows it is around a season that my edd is on the 14th of september plus or minus the doctors will give 14th of september cannot be 6th of march that is demonic are we together that's too far so there is a time period there is an approximation that is the same way with a believer meaning when you start your journey this is you now you are starting your journey you should be able complete you should be able to know that okay by the time i get here what should have been possible in my life everything may not yet experientially be manifest but there should be what i call a token a consolation something that motivates you that i got it right okay i started five years ago praying in tongues one hour every day reading my bible five chapters every day reading my moon rose book after five years i should be able to look back and there has to be an evidence in my life it encourages me to know that the ones that have not manifest i'm getting there but when your life becomes ichabod that everything at all spiritually even if there's nothing materially let there be spiritual intelligence let there be the anointing praying one hour every day for five years to the same god of heaven and not one sick person has been healed through your hands and not i mean you have not seen any clear dream that came to pass at that point you know that something is wrong are we together many believers are now wondering then your spirit man receives that thing you are doing well spiritually everybody who looks at you knows that you are on fire but then relative to what god has shown you you find out that it looks like certain things are not happening then you are taught that you need your mind to catch up now and get involved in the process are we together 
when you start walking with god your mind doesn't necessarily need to actively follow are we together now you you can't get someone born again and you are teaching him principles of excellence and this and that that's that's too that's too unneeded for that level when people get born again they are exposed to fire principles of prayer how to study the word understanding the foundations of righteousness are we together repentance from dead works they need to understand the redemptive work of christ they need to be introduced to the person of the holy spirit the value of corporate gathering are we together all of these foundational things they have to be involved but then eventually now you are in need your child is in need and now your mind comes in so you start renewing your mind by the strategic communication of god's word but then you get to a point where your physical environment is desperately in need of the manifestation of those spiritual blessings this is where my teaching is now the barrenness of god being represented in your physical life you may laugh because of the consolation you are receiving from your spirit man and the fact that your mind is now catching up but sooner or later the reality of time will start demanding god to be manifest in your physical life not just your spirit alone the vicissitudes of life will now begin to compel you to need to translate those spiritual realities into a context that is applicable to your physical life otherwise you will be surprised to find out that a boomerang begins to happen that the challenge that now obstruct your spirit life will start from the natural realm physically are we together yes so this gentleman has not eaten and he's surprised that he can't pray the realm of the spirit is affected by something that is happening here he's standing and he's watching two of his kids they are driving them from school and he cannot pay and when he started with god the issue of finances was not an issue but at this point as a father of two you can't ignore it are we together and he's getting frustrated when he started ministry everybody used to meet under a tree so there was no need for bench and mat if you fell down you fell on the grass but he took it a step further and he opened a church are we together and now you don't sit on the floor in a church and he just realized that they need to buy chairs and he just realized that in that church people will get married one day and that means the reality of family life their well-being that if the families are not doing well no matter how anointed he is very soon there will be empty pews now this guy is is there is a need for the revelation of christ to find expression not just in the spirit realm not just in the realm of the mind but also in the physical this is where many of us are now apostle the bible says great is the mystery of godliness that christ was manifest in the flesh listen he appeared to men he appeared to angels the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory you only behold that glory when it dwells among you are we together even the glory of the father and the bible says is full of grace and truth so i want to help us tonight to show us because let me tell you let me give you a very kind advice never allow your personal frustration make you doubt the validity of kingdom laws never allow your personal frustration i know this is very painful you are you are far from receiving the help of god when you take your personal frustration and create a vendetta between you and god from it and say lord as far as i'm concerned i'm doing what should be done why are things not working no many times the mistake is never from god a gentleman sent me a text today probably he's following and he was going to commit suicide by this night i don't mean this play play i will kill myself he really was going to do it there's how you know that somebody means business with suicide the kind of dreams he's having the, somebody cannot just wake up and say i want to kill myself he's just looking for help 
but there, there are things that can lead to you know that this person will actually kill himself and i was telling him i said no no you don't have to kill yourself and the person says usually this is it i have done everything i know to do or i have done everything koinonia teaching says to do or i have done everything my pastor or the word of god says to do i'm going to make some very audacious statements tonight and i hope it doesn't offend you if it does not work you are missing something the systems of the kingdom are so flawless if you really get it your life will wonder and marvel at the results that will come now this is an, an uncomfortable truth but i want us to please for god's sake humble ourselves tonight and just lend me your attention that if something is not working in my life and your life there is something you know have you seen a learner learning how to drive and then the learner is surprised why is this car moving that way i thought you said i should talk i'm doing my best he thinks based on his mind that he's doing his best but the professional knows what is wrong and the learner will argue and say this and that and that no i don't i don't believe it i don't do this and that and that when i started marking student script a school of ministry students that's when i knew that many students that say they gave me are talking nonsense <laughs> they gave me five they gave me ten as that's for for in for many of it is is complete nonsense at least i'm honest i'm born again and godly and i'm the one that is doing the marking from a very unbiased perspective and i'm surprised ah if you wrote this you should be joking to expect to pass <laughs> now but you ask the person who wrote it i'm just using that as an example you ask the pe just because he read and just because he wrote you can do a mathematical calculation and be wrong but just because your wrong answer is part of the answers and you got it doesn't mean you passed the answer to the question may be five but your wrong calculation gave you two and option a is two and you say i got it no you didn't get it you just found your error as part of the options are we following i don't want to live my life doubting the things i believe I don't want to get to a point in my life where it becomes too late to be accurate so i want to walk with you in a few minutes and i want by the grace of god i think for many of us i know what is wrong and i want to show you this night and i want you to listen because i'm speaking to people who are largely spiritually enlightened so what is wrong you will be surprised to know that the same frustration many of you are having i had it too because i believe with all my heart that i was getting everything right but looking from today's standpoint <laughs> it was a joke i even wonder how i can see the gaps that the mercy of god covered outstanding success has a huge price write it down for someone this is already a deliverance because you believe that success just because the bible says he has given us all things just because the bible says the primary reason why many believers never succeed whether in ministry or in whatever area of life among other things is they misunderstand how spiritual things are both communicated and translated the idea of spiritual things being an inheritance in christ that word if not well explained can mislead you and make you fail now the bible is saying i have been given all things if i have been given 
it means my next and only assignment based on this is to receive and you are not wrong but the system of reception is every other thing i will be saying for many people we think to receive just means to verbalize by faith i receive you see it now but that's incomplete the same way the system of god giving you this you, you see the bible speaks from different angles and different dimensions and so when you are interpreting scripture you have to first understand the context what was the subject matter that was being addressed because it will help you know why certain expressions were used when paul in his pauline epistle is teaching them on revelations of redemption you notice that his communications was uh, they were always from a standpoint of the finished work of christ you will never see in paul's context his exegesis on redemption he does not ever give you any idea that there's anything to be done so he lets you know that you are starting from a position of victory and that is correct with respect to your understanding of redemptive realities but now you switch to the other dimension which is coming into the experience of the kingdom and paul begins to change his communication it is not a he's not counteracting himself he is now showing you why should i want to press to enter something that is an inheritance so paul gets to the book of hebrews and paul now surprises us and even confuses many that in spite of the fact that you have been given this he said there remained a rest for the people of god are we together now he now begins to talk of the sabbath of the church and the sabbath of a man's destiny that until now there is still a rest that means until today men have not entered into the experience of this and he says today if you hear his voice he says do not harden your heart like they did in the provocation in the wilderness is that true and then the bible now begins to tell us that he heard the word just like we did but the word did not profit them and he now introduces something strange he said not mixed a Jimmy's wife is a professional baker. The word mix doesn't mean to talk. It means it involves action. It involves process. When you mix something, you combine factors together. And the Bible said not mix with faith. Faith is part of the many things that should be mixed. Not mix with faith. Like you say, you didn't add salt to the food. The food is not salt. There were many other things before salt arrived but for the taste you are looking for salt is the ingredient that must be added not mixed with faith in them that heard it and so many people are unable to translate these realities into their lives success has a huge price it truly is very costly the earlier you got this the better for you settle it once and for all that the birth of anything valuable is painful number two like i will always say failure too has a huge price tag many people don't know that it's not easy to fail they think it's very easy to fail if there is a price to produce the results that we need what is that price i'm not going to be talking of many of them i'm just going to mention one that i believe with all my heart that many people are not doing is the price of diligence write it down and listen very carefully please don't assume you understand what i'm saying the price of diligence Proverbs 14, verse 23. Read it for me if you are a serious Christian. One, two, read, please. But the talk of the lips only does what? In all labor, there is profit but the talk of the lips only will tend a man to penury 
there is a dimension of entering into your rest that requires labor, requires diligence. Diligence is a trait that all successful people, whether in ministry, in business, have. Many believers are busy. Many believers are taking action, but they are not diligent. Write this down. Diligence is the quality of being productive. Write it down. Diligence is the quality of being strategic. Diligence is the quality of being resilient unbending the refusal to bow out diligence is the quality of endurance please listen to me in africa i don't know if it's a social cultural context but we have a very funny understanding about success we have all kinds of mentalities about success that are wrong in themselves. But I think probably the worst of them all is how much we trivialize success to believe that God or government or parents or mother nature owes us our being successful. Or we just feel, I may just put my hands here and there. And then with just a prophetic word or just a blessing or just a, a, a little oil on it, everything just works. Diligence is not just hard work. Notice my choice of words. You must be strategic. You must be productive. Listen, diligence involves the sacrifice of your time. Diligence involves the sacrifice of your energy. Diligence involves the sacrifice of your resources. The sacrifice of your time, write it down. <laughs> ah, blessed be the name of the Lord. May God open our eyes tonight. Look at me. Let me teach you something. Everybody say time is money. Say it again. You've heard it every time, but what does it mean? What does it mean by time is money? That means that you are only rewarded when you create an event that makes men to have time for it. Listen. Come, Pastor Lawrence, and your lovely wife. I was happy to see you people. Just celebrate them. Come, come quickly. Come stand here. Don't be embarrassed. Thank God you are a pastor. Look at this. How many of you know that last year we didn't have time for their wedding? Because the event was not yet created. Any time an event has not been created in the earth realm, there is no time for it. That means you cannot commit any resources towards it because there is no time for it. Both of them decided, when did you marry? What's the date? 15th? Now, they, they decided to bring time and attach an event to 15th September. The moment they took the risk to create an event, people started having time for them and resources started coming to them. Now that the event has been achieved, nobody will give you money for marriage again because there is no longer time for it. Listen, listen. By 1990, there was no time for Zuckerberg. There was no time for Facebook because that product was not created. There was no event that will make you have time for Facebook. So a gentleman said, let me make men have 
time and with that time will come resources and he made available an event and now we have time for Facebook there was no time for koinonia before koinonia started your Friday night were for something else the moment there was a vision that vision brought time to it and with that time every resource came is that true so when you say time is money Time is not necessarily directly money. Time is only money when an event, a creativity was added and attached to that time. It will now make men to have time for you and with that time it will make them to have their resources. So when you pay Zuckerberg, you are not paying him for the product necessarily. You are really paying for the price he has paid to make you have time for that thing. Are we together now? Now you all have time for browsing. Once upon a time, you could not do that on your phone. Somebody made that possibility. With that time now goes your data. Your data will finish and you want to invest in. When you pay data, what are you really paying? Think well. What are you paying? Time. When you pay for a venue... And they say from 12 o'clock to 6 is 60,000. What did you pay for? If they give you a job and they say from 8 to 6 you are working, what are you really paying for? If you take away time on earth, nobody will pay anybody for anything again. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So there is an event. And then men begin to invest in this. And now they are married. God bless you. Thank you. Ask him what it took to create that time. <laughs> he summarized it in one sentence. It is not. I said, that's my message. <laughs> now, but is he married or not? Please talk. You are laughing, but I hope you understand what I'm saying. Is he married or not? Did the devil stop it? But it is not. 24 hours to your wedding, there's no reception. Oh God, take my shame. That's, that's, that's labor there. It's labor in prayer and faith. It's not just an activity. In all labor, there is profit. <laughs> goodness it takes diligence please sit down sit down pastor if you are not diligent listen very carefully my brothers and my sisters there is nothing you will ever do and achieve in life if you neglect diligence there are many many men of God for instance I was listening to Bishop Oedeko's um, lecture at, at Benson Idahosa, the university there, commemorating um, Mama Idahosa's birthday. And I mean, that, that great man of God at that age was just crying out his life. Many people believe life is so cheap. They just think just because there is the anointing that can accelerate a factor. They believe that the anointing is a basis for laziness and lack of diligence. Many of us here, the missing ingredient is that we are not diligent. Diligence does not mean you are not moving. You are not moving strategically. You are just busy around trying to hustle. What business are you doing? Oh yeah, let me join now. What are you doing? Let me just apply. I will apply everywhere by faith. You believe that what you are doing. Uh -uh. Let me show you something. Luke chapter 14, please. Let's read two verses, 28 and 29. I hope God is talking to someone. Luke chapter 14, 28, please. Luke chapter 14, 28. Read with me, Koinonia. I want to read. For which of you intending to build a tower? Hold on. So you, you have an intention. You have a vision. 
you have a goal but the bible says the first thing you do is not to go and buy cement the first thing you do is to do what sit down and then count the cost whether you have sufficient do not start it finish it you can know you have what it takes to finish it before you start otherwise the bible will not talk about it here you can know that i have capacity to finish this vision next verse less happily after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it all that behold it begin to mock him in fact let's let's read the next verse saying this man began to build continue till i ask you to stop and was not able to finish remember we're talking of completion here finishing next verse or what king going to make war against another king seated not down first and consulted whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand are we together that you become strategic about your life not just to take action many young people pray in tongues they fast dry as soon as they are done they just get up just because the holy spirit told them do a and b they just get up foolishly they, there is no they, they don't have that strategic approach to life a man comes with his wife look at this you are married to your wife and you are acting as if how will the finances be run the spirit god is faithful is he not in this life you are not diligent let's pray wonderful but you are not diligent there is no planning there is no strategic approach are we together you have real issues that need to be dealt with but you just find a way of spiritualizing it and throw everything faith is not foolishness you are sitting down let me show you diligence how much do we have now 20,000 per month. How much do you need? 200,000 per month. We are, we are far from the goal, but at least we are aware of what we have. The miracle comes when you know what you have first. Remember, what you have in your house is already a sign that you are about to receive a miracle. Are we together? Yes. If you have 20,000 naira in your house and you are a pastor, that means there's no organizing conference. <laughs> There's no organizing any breakthrough service in the name of any hilarious vision. We are not diligent and we are not strategic. How many pastors are consistently in debt because they continue to organize conferences borrowing money and they tell you it's God that did it and they web themselves in a lot of shame and reproach. You borrow one million, invite five men of God who come for four, now you think that just because it is spiritual you are not strategic about your life you will never prosper and you will not do well that way are we together a man is starting a ministry and all no members there's no track record of loyalty and you go and rent a venue where you are paying hundred thousand per month or per week believers if you don't listen to what i'm telling you you will be surprised that your life is not making progress a tongue-talking born-again believer is receiving salary of fifty thousand. you will find him in zaria suya spot he will buy five chicken one for apostle what you think just because you are buying for apostle means you are you are not diligent if one chicken is say three thousand and you buy five fifteen thousand what percentage of your salary is that all of a sudden you will find out two months later on that you forgot that your child's school fees is coming is it not funny how people forget they have children and then two weeks to resumption or three days they'll say ah sorry yo I didn't know. where is the pta letter you are not diligent it's not about having money or not having money the same way people come to church when they now say time for offering they are surprised you are not diligent you are not strategic about your life you just stand and guess while the offering is coming quickly you just touch your pocket bring out everything and drop it you are not intentional about life i tell you why many things are not working for us we are praying we are happy 
but we are not getting the level and the kind of productivity that should be gone. I have prayed, I have fasted, but I took out time, the entire retreat. I'm not just going as the spirit leads. There is something intentional to be inculcated in the people. And because of that, it demanded two days. It's not God that told me two days. The wisdom of the word and the level of investment I seek to produce in your life in these two days necessitate two days of training. The first dimension of being diligent is not hard work, it's being strategic. Being strategic helps your energy to be worth it. Many of us are dissipating energy, but we are shadow boxing. Apostle, it's not like I'm sitting down, I'm moving, I'm doing something. What are you doing? Have you thought about what you are doing? There are people who can start 10 businesses in one month. It's a sign that they are not diligent. They were not strategic over what they are doing. I just want to do something. I want to get my hand doing something. You are just hard working. You are not diligent. A diligent person will sit down. You will look at your lifestyle. You will look at your goals and your vision. You will look at what capital you have. The knowledge, the level of knowledge you have. You look at that business relative to your service. Relative to your life as a workforce person. You look at every other factor. How long do I want to do this business? Is it just to help me get capital for something bigger? Or this is a line of interest I seek to pursue? There's no diligence. That's why there is no sustainability in the things we do. We just jump at whatever we hear is happening. And do you know, let me tell you this. When you, when you continue failing for a long time, you will stop believing yourself. I've seen a lot of pastors, men and women of God, very anointed people, but they come to me and say, Apostle, what, why, why is my life like this? And I look at them, I say, do you know, sometimes they can even tell me as I'm talking to you now, I'm on a dry fast, three days. You know three days dry fast is not easy. Try it. Three days fast in itself is, is but dry. When dry means no water, no nothing. And the person is, you are seeing the spiritual sacrifice. And the person is saying, I thought this thing comes by it. And you are saying, no. Let me tell you what you are doing wrong. I will not become your member. There are many things you don't know. You are not diligent. The man who tells you he wants members has not sat down to really think of what it means to be a pastor over members. He's not planned it ask him have you done your homework to one those members he says i can preach by the grace of god i'm anointed i'm a mighty prophet i'm an apostle of god is that all it takes to run a church are you seeing that now a lot has not happened we ignore all of these things and then he sees and says oh one day we will take the nations in the name of jesus according to my vision i saw doors opening uh-huh what do you think will happen so we just sit down and feel like, uh, let's do a conference. Light and glory, prophetic encounter, season one. You start, now I'm not being sarcastic. You just sat down and thought, okay, what is this conference supposed to do to my members? What is it supposed to do relative to their spiritual level? Relative to the level of ministry? Relative to our finances? I'm bringing one guest minister from Ghana. I'm bringing one guest minister from London. I'm adding Apostle Joshua Selman from it. What is your budget for the conference? Two million. What is your entire church offering for a year? 500,000. God is faithful. You see that? That is already a recipe for a struggling pastor forever. I don't care what kind of tongues he prays. There are many believers that don't have plan to one day have their own house. You see it in their life. Show me your notebook under God that I know that I'm in one small room, but I'm already planning. And these are the steps. I am being strategic. Let me tell you this. I stand before the God of heaven. Come, Ejimi. Be my witness. There is nothing you see being done in Koinonia today that I did not say will happen. He will tell you. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. 
I can bring notebooks for you and show you where I wrote these things and I wrote everything that will be done when koinonia was going to start i told you that i saw cgc bigger than this it was small but i saw it expand it's not just vision so we began to prepare when the lord showed me that nations were going to come and all of these things i sat down i said it takes a lot i studied the seven largest churches in every continent of the world it's not just prayer and fasting alone you have to be strategic at a particular level of ministry that I get to, I may not be outside on a bike again. Somebody will embarrass me. Will I have the financial level at that time to at least have a car? What if Koinonia needs to run Gen 24 hours? These are things, thank you sir, thank you so much. These are things that many people never plan for. You just sit down and say, let's have another baby. And God is watching you. Say, you, you, I, did you hear yourself? Let's have another baby. You see, Nigerians and Africa, we continue to punish ourselves and we continue to make a fool of God because we are not strategic. The baby comes and the man does not know what to do. They are confused and he's angry. You are the stupid woman. Why didn't you advise me when I said, let's have a baby? Say, is it my fault? And, and, all of, and the baby who is innocent there is watching. And saying, well, so what is, what is going on now? What are you going to do with me? If I ask many of you here, my dear brothers and sisters, don't stand up. But if I say, how many of you are in ministry, not will be in ministry, are in some kind of ministry, many people will stand up. And I look at you. If I say after 10 years, many people will be struggling. They will get angry. They'll say, Apostle is proud. He's talking nonsense. He's being stupid. But I said this thing years ago that many ministries will struggle in the future because I saw by the Spirit that there were certain demands that 21st century ministry will require. And I said, Lord, I don't want to be stupid. I want you to show me what are the systems that will take to accept and God said if you can sit down and you are willing to pay the price I will show you when I was saying some of these things people laughed at me others insulted me others said a lot of things it's amazing how I look at people today and I look at the way they are languishing in the squallow of ignorance God is the builder of all but let me tell you every house is built by someone yes diligence involves being strategic you have to sit down and plan in the name of jesus god is faithful but i have to plan what is the system for making sure everyone gets filled with the holy ghost in koinonia it's not enough to be anointed imagine that you did not put that system in place a time will come half of your members are not filled with the holy ghost my god that is some that is some some babylon in your church when half of the members are not filled with the holy ghost you are in trouble already what is the system in place for all of this is part of being diligent number two diligence involves sacrifice mm. many of us miss it in this area sacrifice is a non-negotiable price if you want to ever be great the sacrifice of prayer the sacrifice of prayer you see the sacrifice of fasting the sacrifice of staying till you understand the word of god god is my witness whom i serve i don't know how many hours i've slept from yesterday till today and it's going to be a marathon into the week just going don't get me wrong i rest but every man knows on easy lies the head that wears the crown you see that while you are sleeping and praying oh god bless these people in this retreat 
open their eyes let koinonia service today be powerful bring the people let there be miracles let there be signs let there be wonders my brothers and my sisters no matter what god has given you the sacrifice dimension of success is something you must come to terms with it will cost you we are a generation that likes comfort too much we are a generation that likes pleasure too much we are a generation that is so averse to sacrifice the moment you have to constrain yourself a little we complain and shout and ramble yet if you see the kind of results we want it takes it takes a lot of sacrifice take sacrifice someone sent me a text and said apostle why are you not responding to me i've been calling you and you are not responding what is this and i just look i said this this man does not know the hundreds of text messages that i get every day and the things that i have to do i was counseling people yesterday counseling people in lagos i already knew i was going to miss my flight i told this my people i said you guys should just go to the airport i'll find my way just go i knew i was going to miss my flight but the people that i was is it was a strategic counseling and i said no 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 let me miss the flight you just go and they went as soon as we're done i went to the airport got the next flight that could come to abuja instead of just flying down to kaduna and coming to rest i had to, because of sacrifice i routed down to abuja and then from there now from the airport back i arrived in the night as soon as i arrived i just went refreshed myself and went to work immediately apostle joshua selman someone sent me a text and said apostle we are proud of you we saw that in lagos they gave you an award i said don't look at the award look at the hands that collected that award the sacrifice we like pleasure we like clapping but the inner price the price apostle what do you do that people are just blessed like this what do you do that the anointing you are just talking and people are jumping up and down my brother and my sister is not a charm it's a price even a charm has a price my police will not just give you a charm because you want to be diabolic do you know how much you are going to pay it's a price i can't remember the last time in my life i watched a movie I have television but it's off i can't remember the last time the tv in my room was on honestly sincerely why did you buy it then i must enjoy you it's my money then you will never become anything in life there is a huge price please young people listen being young does not mean to be indisciplined and careless you must be ready to be serious and pay the price it takes nobody just follows a leader just because of anointing it's a combination of many factors including a track record of consistency every member wants to know that the leader they follow is visionary enough there must be predictability to your destiny and your vision your life and whatever your mission is must be well articulated for anyone to follow you otherwise they'll come and receive miracles and just go away human beings are not stupid they are first human beings before members of any church. Sacrifice. Say, I receive grace to be sacrificial. Mm. Sacrifice. When you carry the money, you should buy a book with and read. And you buy shoe because you saw somebody buy a shoe of 100,000. You allow a luciferian spirit to deceive you to go and buy a shoe of hundred thousand to prove a point you are not ready for the sacrifice dimension of greatness let me tell you it's not just when you have you spend there are times that a door can be open but you close it yourself because you know the time has not come it's not every open door that means god has licensed you to pass the door does not have to be closed to know it's not time it can be open but you limit it by yourself and close it because there is a season of appearing is god speaking to us sacrifice many of us are comfortable with little results 
that's why you find out that my many brothers and sisters men of god around this nation and the world they never go far they start small small signs and wonders small membership small miracles small testimony and you know that arrival mentality i look at myself and say apostle you've not started though you've not started at all you never come to my house i have received so many awards you never come to my house and see one picture that i snap with a governor or a politician or somebody from the presidency you will not find one i don't trust them they are deceptive you won't find any award on my table with this he received award from this one this one he met with this governor this one he met with this you it's not joshua selman those things are deceptive i push them what you find is my future on my table not my past fill me up till i overflow i wanna run over i wanna run over fill me up till i overflow i wanna run I get hundreds of text messages every day apostle you are a sign and wonder the apostle of our time great man there is a testimony apostle we've been trusting God for a child for eight years remember you spoke to us now the child has come apostle let me have your account number we want to be sending this and that and sometimes I put my phone in front of me like this and I look at it I said Lord deliver me from deception and complacency deliver me compared to where we are going this is only a step out of the cave there are still lands to conquer there are still territories what have we seen that we brag about there are deep things in the spirit when you have an arrival mentality you will never see the need to sacrifice to sacrifice in this kingdom you don't arrive oh you don't arrive all those who arrive are the ones who are no longer relevant when God is moving. Is God speaking to us? Many of us here are not willing to sacrifice. Show me what you are willing to sacrifice to be prosperous. Show me what you are willing to sacrifice to be truly anointed. Show me what you are willing to sacrifice. Apostle, I like movie. I'm like that. We are all we are in our family. It's a gift. It's not a gift. It's an appetite you have refused to curb. It can be a gift, even if you are called into the movie industry. It takes diligence to sit down and plan. Can be a gift. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, some of us need to trust God for grace to off that laptop, off that phone, off that television and say television i'm tired of watching other people fulfill the assignment i'm ready to sit down lord you are calling me into a strong apostolic ministry i open my bible not tv there is a time to watch tv but in the name of jesus i sit down when others are sleeping you wake up your eye wants to close they don't try it. don't try it i'm going far Jacos kapatakata lord open my eyes and you are hearing one message you are about to rest more there's another worship backing you up then there is another prayer confession as you are stretching fire on your spirit because you are preparing for an extraordinary life men of god there is no shortcut to this thing let's not mock god there is no shortcut that blood must really flow the way to the throne is the cross there is no other way hallelujah and you sit down the the the, the sacrificial dimension of diligence there are times that god will demand from you i have ten thousand that's all i have and god says carry it and give me and you sit and say god no you are, uh, if you are really God, your mercies endure, you are new every morning. All those statements of unbelief. You carry that thing by faith and say, Lord, I'm, I'm, let me be stupid for you. Let me tell you this. Show me a man who is no longer afraid of pain. I show you a man that Satan cannot do anything about. When you, when you master 
pain and it no longer touches you the devil will put his hand on his head and say what do i do with this person because pain is his edge in your life the moment you are uncomfortable you run away from that thing the cave you fear holds the miracle you look for that cave the cave that you are afraid of is because the treasure you seek is there you must trust god for grace and roll that stone and enter into that graveyard eyes closed and say lord if i perish i perish is god speaking to us yes say sacrifice say it shout sacrifice the sacrifice of your time the sacrifice of your energy many of you see what god is doing through this ministry did you know that sometimes as early as six or seven in the morning the workers are already at work you see this guy standing the worship team is behind me male and female no difference when you are in the worship team they are standing there so when you hear me raise a song and they are singing it's not robots human beings behind everything that works is a man making it work behind everything that works if you eat a delicious meal someone stood in the midst of the smoke to cook it if your cloth is nice someone paid the price to iron it please let us settle it once and for all nothing just happens if you are fed spiritually at the back of that revelation is someone's sacrifice we devalue the sacrifices of men in nigeria you look at young people talking about men of god and they have zero revelation zero result zero discipline zero vision yet they sit down tear men of god they talk about men of god this guy is more anointed than this this one is more sound ah that other guy in uh, in, in ghana oh have you seen the one in this oh and they sit down and analyze any day you see sacrifice don't pretend you didn't see it stop by and salute it even if you are in a hurry the moment you see a man with blood and the scars of sacrifice please don't pass and ignore it stop and say i salute the investment of god upon your sacrifice it's the reason why when we finish service we allow our elderly ones to sit down it's not just because of favoritism the sacrifice of time the sacrifice of life the precious workers in this ministry some of them have been working since morning some of them will only go back early in the morning and some of them by by early in the morning they are going to start their work sacrifice the koinonia you are getting blessed by many of you when i mention a scripture you see it here at the back of this result is someone who is paying the price to make sure they do it well what do you want in life are you willing to pay the price or are you willing to let the price be paid for you no say i receive grace to be sacrificial one more time say i receive grace show me a man of god that will sacrifice in prayer that will sacrifice in mentorship that will sacrifice in the word whose heart is open to understand the systems of god my brother and my sister i show you a man of god that no devil no power no cause no charm in existence can stop show me a man who is willing to settle down and understand god's financial systems and pay the price i show you a man who will wave poverty forever and wave it goodbye forever show me a man who is ready to pay the price to be diligent enough to be valuable i show you a man who will never beg never beg never beg something happened when we were traveling to lagos very humorous story let me just say it. i got into the plane and then i saw i saw a couple and their mother they were shouting at Paul, so I said, these people have come to embarrass me now. And they were happy, and then when we got down, the mother came and hugged me. Said she has been listening to my message. My son, let's snap. And we're snapping, and the mother just squeezed some money. I said, mama, don't do this. I don't know you. I said, you, you must collect you. And I said, ah, this is somebody's salary. And somebody's saying, you must collect. The key is not anointing, it's value. 
value if you are not valuable no mama will stand behind you a a wise son makes a glad father a foolish son is a reproach to his mother nobody will be proud of you for not doing nothing let me tell you the truth i'm being hard on us i love you our retreat has started workers value stop packaging faking lying settle down and say in jesus name i must get this thing stop looking for money and trust god to piece together all the spiritual resources to be valuable they were carrying my luggage and then i sat down somewhere at the airport and the next thing i saw some group of boys i know how people look at me i just know that they're about to embarrass me again they came and said apostle ha ah, jesus this and that and that i was sad because i missed my flight i was on my way to pick another flight to come back and then i get into the plane and i see someone looking at me apostle and he shouted jesus i quietly went and i sat down there was a space between me and the next person true story yesterday the guy got up and left his workmate and came to me that he wants i said no you want to embarrass me here we started creating a scene and you know how people in the plane got ah they were happy the guy said i'm not going he wanted to kneel down there i said what is all this now ah this is a, a flight that is taking us the guy said he must sit down close to me i said okay he sat down close to me when everything was done i didn't know that all through that flight he was busy packaging a lot of money he works in abuja and he just carried that i said no 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 i won't collect i will just bless you and i said once upon a time in my life this is what i needed to eat dinner and jesus was still lord if you are not valuable nobody will reward you my brothers and my sisters success is not a charm if you are not valuable nobody will reward you stop making demand of from life when you are not giving anything back it's a scam to demand from life and not give anything back so after you he said this charge i give unto you my son timothy that you wore a good warfare the warfare is not just fighting demons you are wrestling with prophecy in the name of jesus a word has come that god is my ebenezer to help you means you are doing something lord I'm, I'm i'm going to settle down and take my life seriously why is it that my help has passed me and there is nothing it's like a stench from my life driving them why is nobody coming to sponsor my ministry something is wrong value i don't share these testimonies to brag i told you about my pastor friend who someone called him and said please do you know apostle he said yes he said i'm going to transfer money to you send it to him for me the thing paying the man of god he called me and said apostle what is this somebody doesn't know you and knows me then now sends money to my account and say i should transfer it to you i just cracked a joke and we laughed and laughed he's my very good friend value you can make up your mind and say in the name of jesus i will pay my children's school fees the whole session from the beginning of every year and then when you are prophesied like that you carry your spirit your head your mind into the room where the spirit of god breathes upon people and you say lord there has to be a way there has to be a way i can tell you this my brothers and my sisters when you mean business the gate of destiny must open the reason why many of us have not forced that that gate must be broken he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder the gate of destiny will not open when you stand and just speak english oh gate i'm standing here no stories you are, you are mocking yourself gates you must open you must open you didn't open for my father look at what he said him and his wife that nobody ever married legally i'm sure he made up his mind in the name of jesus i must marry a wife by paying a dowry and going to church when he was saying it the evil force he said let's see what will happen i did it for your father and your mother let me tell you something sacrifice is a covenant when you make up your mind to sacrifice it's like entering a covenant with god gather unto me my saints 50 verse 5 psalms they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice
Number three, diligence involves resilience and tenacity. Now, this is where I want to talk a little and then we'll pray for tonight. Please sit down. Everybody say resilience. Everybody say tenacity. Come. Hold me. Try to resist me as I'm moving. This is how life is. No destiny will not allow you cut walk to the promised land. No, sir. There are not only giants in the gate. The giant starts from Egypt. They will pursue you. It's not just the giants on the promised land. There are giants where you are going. There are forces that will stop you. So you are to hold me again. You are trying to move forward. And these devils that have stopped everybody want to stop you. It takes faith. You will fail many times. And you say, Satan, I will wear you by my consistency. Whoever told you that just because God spoke to you, you will succeed at first. There is difference between failure as an event and failure as a person. Believers, this is where we miss it. The average Christian, when he fails once, he will bring all kinds of jargons around and excuse and say, you see this, this and that. And Christians, we are very good at making people to stop rising. The moment you do something, you, you, God told you you are going to take worship to the nations. Your first album, you bought it by yourself. Say, I won't disgrace myself like this again. Sorry, Mr. Man. That means you are not ready to get to the nations. Life rewards tenacity. You put the first album, it doesn't work. You say, I know I didn't get anything right, but at least it gave me exposure. Let's go to write the second song. The first one, I just composed nonsense. The second one, I'm not just going to involve the Holy Spirit alone. I will involve a music director. So both the Holy Spirit and a music director is involved to help you balance some of the things that will make people like us not to buy it. Are we together? And now, by the time you balance it, your second album comes with a greater level of professionalism. A day will come, you'll be standing on a stage and somebody will be waiting with a check outside to give you what would have been your bill for the first entire production the first time whoever told you champions become champions from day one don't you know that success is overcoming many failures you never qualify to be great if you cannot ignore failure and keep moving god is speaking to someone already man of god just because you started ministry and nobody's patronizing your grace just because you started ministry every sick body you prayed for looked at you and warned you and they told you to never never come for their conference again just because the first sermon you made a mistake you forgot the scripture because of tension anointing will not drive tension like that it takes experience to drive tension you will need to do this thing many times ramble on the stage more than once twice and then eventually one day you will now begin to gain yourself you can articulate do you know what it means to be talking and looking at people and they are looking at you back especially if they are frowning at you you crack a joke nobody laughs you forget the scripture no amount of prayer will take that thing away it's a track record you must create so it's not a spiritual problem he say it's just the, the the challenge you face on your road to greatness you don't go back and say oh god but i fasted now what evil spirit and no evil spirit entered you consistency consistency a day will come you will build confidence you will be able to look at people and preach is god speaking to us say in the name of jesus I will wear failure until I succeed. The word wear there doesn't mean to put it on. It means to wear it. If my expression is not correct, find your own. The idea is frustrate failure till you succeed. Look, let me tell you, failure can be tired. I found out by experience that failure is personified like a being that can say, I'm tired of this guy. Go, pass and the gate opens and you walk gallantly i can tell you stories of my failures and you will be surprised 
I remember praying for somebody years ago. They took me to pray for someone on wheelchair. I think I've shared it in maybe 2012 or 13. I went full of the Holy Ghost. Those days, you fasted and prayed for everything. Even if they said, lead praise and worship. I prayed for, I, I took out time. If you see the level of revelation I shared. And yet, when the time came to pray, all in the final analysis, I prayed, I laid hands, and I know the man had faith. Because faith comes by hearing. That guy gave me all his attention. I knew his spirit was in what I was saying. Let me give you a little testimony. Let me come. Let's laugh a little. You see this guy here? I love it, Jimmy. Let me tell you this. When I started teaching them how to get people filled with the Holy Ghost and the principles of impartation, something happened one day. I left a Jimmy and one lady. He was to get her filled with the Holy Ghost. You see, when you see him talk now, you are flying from your chair. It's a track record. I remember Jimmy talking with the lady in, you know he's very intelligent. He shared every revelation when he finished. He now tried, the lady was tired. She said, I'm, I'm tired, this thing. I mean, it's so, it pained him. And then, I, I can't remember the story exactly. I think he called on me. And I came and I mean, in less than one minute, that lady was, and we were going home. <laughs> and Jimmy was gloomy. He just said, but ah, that at least if she fell down, he knew he would have helped her faith. I remember comforting him and said, don't worry. Do you know why I'm taking out time to act this drama? So that you can be healed from that lie the devil is telling you. Amateurism is allowed in the school of success. Every professional was once a student. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't be ashamed of being a student. Just make sure you continue. So when you go for the meeting, and just like Apostle taught you, your blood is hot from SOM graduation. You received fire here and you just organized a meeting. And in the name of Jesus, you waited for word of knowledge. You were surprised. Nothing happened. The crusade, you prayed, said, I sense the anointing here. And the person who fell was there. And you just, everybody is looking at your error. And as soon as they shared the grace, you went back and said, Kai. Of course, God will always leave himself with a witness. But you go back feeling, Lord, Abba. if I was wrong, couldn't you have even just done it? And then we can settle it later. God says, no, pass through it. It's a track record. The day you are coming down from your car and a blind eye is opening. That day, people look at you and say, how did you start? You say, my brother, I didn't start with a blind eye opening. I started with finishing a service like funeral <laughs> because nothing happened prophesy to someone say pay the price say pay the price honorably <laughs> hallelujah ask every doctor here when they were students the things they laugh about now was once a thorn in the flesh ask every lecturer here when they were teaching him what he's now teaching the students, he didn't smile at some of the things. Abi Pastor Alpha, you can't look at some of them and say, this thing is hard. Yet today you are the one teaching it. Hallelujah. So you stand today and declare in the name of the Lord. And someone is blessed. You are learning the principles of finance and favor. You get up with that zeal. And go and start a business you start a popcorn machine with the fire from the book you read and you eat your popcorn alone nobody comes you just say it's an evil spirit no sir look let me tell you this if you learn this tonight you will not be ashamed of your pain again the next time things go wrong it's not always demonic sometimes you just say lord i thank you look at the apostles think how many times they were embarrassed do you know what it means to be mentored by apostle jesus this is Jesus we are talking about, the apostle of our faith. Having mentored some guys full of grace and truth. And then they went to pray for an epileptic patient. Mentored directly by Jesus, not John, not Moses. And they laid hands on that guy. In the name of Jesus. And the guy was not healed. The people would have beat them there to kill them. 
if Jesus didn't come on time. But the time came, hallelujah. Peter, when Peter is in a room, they line sick people, not for a crusade. Peter is about to pass, and his shadow, mastery, they call it, mastery. A realm and a dimension had come. Did you know once upon a time in my life, I would never speak for someone to fall under the anointing. No, I would lay hands, then you will fall. So if I want five of you to receive any impartation, I will patiently follow. I didn't have the luxury of just making a statement. Where, who, who dash monkey banana? But you ask the devil in the pit of hell, ask him, he knows. Kalabakosiata that you stand and make one pronouncement and open the two lift gates over men's destinies it's not just an impartation it's a track record are we together now listen tonight i want you to know that failure is not the end is a pathway to success this is the level where many of you are now that's why i'm explaining to you you are there now and you are praying and nothing is happening lord come through for me now and it looks like your heavens are closed and you are already getting angry you are already getting frustrated father i thought apostle said that if we finish dancing i've danced and danced and danced i put my prayer request i danced through the night it happened to me too don't think it just manifested let me tell you something the future you are trying to enter a large part of it by god's grace have entered i can tell you what to expect it will do you like a dream the day the day the legal claims of your training is over you will wake up one morning into a realm that you say god tell me it's a joke what is this what is this see a day will come you will look at your life and not find any scar and you are saying where did it go to and god says enjoy the blessings of your endurance when you see someone going to nda you see how they treat him when he's going to what they call the first level tamawan yes but by the time that gentleman is about to stand and give his last parade he stands with honor the fearful weak guy five years ago is now the warrior of today they can send him to my duguri and he says where is boko haram i'm ready to face them some of what you are going through god gives you victory many times by bringing your fear and you together there is a relationship between your fear and you and the spirit of courage sometimes running away from your fear will destroy you so god makes you strong by making you stare at your fear until you become friends your fear will no longer run away from you is it not the rent you stand with the landlord you stand with the policeman and finally you will learn that police does not kill landlord does not kill you no longer fear then the miracle comes and god will say it's not that i could not supply it i wanted to build your heart so that you are strong notice that every time you fail if you use it well it can impart faith in your heart this is something until you are in the school of the spirit it will never make sense hallelujah Amen. you can turn your fears to your miracle man of god the fact that you gave a word of knowledge oh i'm seeing pastor james on you he say no my name is pastor alpha uh, your your wife you married judith say no sir if you are not if you are not serious we will drive you here my wife is called annie you, do you, you have five sons no sir we have two two i'm seeing a girl no sir i have a boy and you turn back and say god if you didn't send me why embarrass me i can go back to i can use my accounting can what is it a bank i can't go and walk in a bank and god says you are a prophet to the nations let me tell you do you know while you are help him oh my god you see that do you know that while you are complaining god never talks to you about that issue he gives you another assignment he now says all right that lady go and meet her stand before her before i'll tell you what to say say mm -mm. god what is her name first say no so go and stand and you now say young lady no i'm not this kind of guys if you think i'm saying no 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 i know you are somebody's wife god just sent me so yeah talk fast already the, your your hearing is hazy by her shout listen he's training you so that the day you stand over a nation 
and say the lord said i should speak over this nation no matter who writes an article writing nonsense you have been immune there is a vaccination you have received all these people that cry over little persecution you were not trained well in the school of the spirit is god speaking to us oh god is calling me to be a kingdom millionaire and god says so you're fifty thousand and he said lord please I, I, is he you confirm it in a dream and you have five dreams in the night to show you it is him you even see yourself giving it you ask god to confirm every other thing you won't you will have a close heaven but confirm this one at once it will come and you keep giving like a fool until one day someone advises you and say look i know that you know this destiny we take it easily and god says listen to me and one day in one year when the rewarder of man ah oh, 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 oh. my help has come oh, oh. Listen, I will never forget the first time in my life I started seeing a strange manifestation of the Holy Spirit. It was during our second crusade. I remember going to minister in a church. That was the first time I would mention people's names and see them run out by the anointing. Like I mentioned your name and you run out. I said, what is this? I've never seen this. The signs don't go before. The signs don't go with. They follow you listen many of us believers let me teach you you are in a season right now where your failure does not mean god is not speaking are you hearing what i'm saying please listen very carefully the fact that you may not get it right physically does not mean the anointing is not on you the fact that you did the business and it failed does not mean that kingdom financing anointing is not on you the fact that you preached and your message looked like nonsense all the revelations you gathered evaporated is not demonic it's a track record go through it and see what you will make out of your life you pray for the first person he's not healed say lord while i'm learning what i did wrong who will i pray for again and god will say there is a cancer patient stage four in shika i say lord this is too much don't embarrass me like that and God says well it's up to you you can choose to disobey me when you look at that cancer patient even you by yourself you you'll be afraid what did you come to do here I I, I came to pray God sent me now I was and they said, oh yeah pray let's see as soon as you pray on your way going out you see that the person has died they say if if you are not careful we will arrest you and you go back and say god what did i do is it not the call and god says no son you continue i am birthing a mighty healing ministry through you a day will come listen a day will come in and through your life it's no longer the issue of who is healed or who is not healed again your ego has been so strong it's now about obedience not results that is the day you will pass somebody on a wheelchair and he will get up you didn't plan the idea was not to pray for the sick but you had gotten to a point in the spirit where you are not an amateur again this is how god builds this man that you see my goodness i can't begin to tell you about my failures you think it's every message i preached that was impressive no what you see today is a track record of many years man of god i bring you a word of hope don't let any man despise you you know sometimes we men of god we have a way of intimidating especially younger people and we make them look like there's no hope for you it's a lie if god brought me where i am there is nobody that cannot rise with greater fire and grace don't fake visions if you are not seeing it be patient you can see a real vision start where you are and be patient take the risk you will make mistakes not you may you will but don't allow it dampen you you have to believe in your destiny enough to know apostle look at what i'm doing my life is empty god where are you uh -uh. Uh -uh. you may think 
that you had a revelation that this guy is your husband this girl is your husband you go and meet her and say sorry i'm engaged and you go back and say god but you spoke to me he says no problem you are learning how to hear you are learning spiritual precision a day will come you will be a master and your voice will be like the voice of god upon the earth and when they look at you remember remember brothers and sisters little samuel too had a problem when he was hearing god the man whose word never fell to the ground a day came he said is it god or not god eli i'm not sure the bible captures the story of his learning but now look at samuel a man like a god upon the earth another man looks at him and his donkey starts going back home what changed a track record of consistency are you ready to pray diligence add diligence to everything that has happened and unbending resilience lord you have called me into the worship ministry even if nobody invites me i will continue writing songs lord they may not place a demand on my grace but i will continue i will give my best to it i will pay the price brothers and sisters i guarantee you this that looks like a simple message if you pay attention tonight you will wear life out until the gate is open for you lift your voice and begin to blast in the throat. pray in the spirit for a few minutes
listen. Listen to me. Listen. Moses was ordained and anointed to be a deliverer. He didn't know how to do it. He killed an Egyptian because he was not strategic. God took him. God did not take away the assignment. God showed him how he would do it. It will be by a rod, not a knife. Moses, you are called, but you are using the wrong tools. Some of you, you are called, but the tools you are using is why you are failing. You are called into business, but the tools you are using. You are called into ministry, but how you were mentored is why things are not working. The information given to you, it is true that you are a deliverer. You are called into the prophetic, but the way they taught you the prophetic is why it looks like divination. You were called into wealth and abundance, but the person who mentored you may have been a greedy person and he made it look like the call to kingdom wealth is a call to materialism. Lord, correct my strategy. Lift your voice and pray. Correct my strategy. Something is wrong, not with the vision not with the assignment the strategy may be wrong lord correct my strategy there is a way i'm doing ministry that's why i'm not getting result it's not the call it's the strategy pray this prayer lord correct my prayer strategy correct my bible study strategy correct my leadership strategy something i know i'm missing something please pray tonight why is my church not growing why is my ministry not growing lord i don't doubt the call but i doubt the strategy correct the strategy listen listen Please look up everyone hear me tonight's meeting is very powerful for many of you you don't need to correct the vision you don't need to correct the assignment you are right but the strategy is what is making the result to not come the business you are in is correct but the strategy the ministry is correct but the strategy you were not supposed to have a church it was an evangelical outfit you went to open a church now nobody is bringing money for cheers let me tell you you are not free till the pattern is given to you the pattern is a strategy it says go and fill seven vessels with water that was a strategy go around jericho that was the strategy walk on water is not enough to want a miracle Lord, reveal the strategy for my result. For my result. Result in ministry. Result in my spiritual life. Lift your voice and pray. Reveal the strategy. Reveal the strategy. Hallelujah. Look up, please. We'll soon be done. I want us to pray over our finances. Look at me. Many of us here, this is where we really need God to come in. God has blessed you with all blessings. Right now, there are many of us, there's not much you can do with your finances. You are going to say, Lord, open my eyes. Where is my strategy? Not our strategy where is my strategy for ministry how do i finance ministry how do i finance my business lord i'm about to get married 
Lord, I'm married with three children. What is the strategy? Lift up your voice and pray. Show me, oh God. Every financial exploit comes with a solid strategy. Your ministry will never be financed until you receive a strategy. Your life and destiny may never be adequately financed until you receive a strategy. What is the blueprint of God? Please pray, Koinonia. Don't take lightly this prayer. Hallelujah. Listen, please look at me. When it was time to cross the Red Sea, the strategy for Moses was take your rod, stretch it. The river parted, the ground lifted. When it was time for Joshua to lead the people through, listen, the strategy was that the, the I think the, the, the priest, the, the, the Levites or so, went in front and then the Jordan parted. When it was time for Jesus, the strategy was not to part the water. You would die there waiting for water to part, whereas the strategy has changed. The fact that God is not doing something the way he did it yesterday doesn't mean he's, the, he's not the one doing it. Give us this day my strategy. Give me this day. Lord, the strategy that started ministry from zero to hundred, I've exhausted it. What is the strategy from hundred to one thousand? What is the strategy? Lord, the strategy for my finances as a bachelor, as a spinster, I received it. But now I'm married with three children. What is the updated strategy for my daily bread? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone met me last week, a dear lovely man of God that I love so much. And he called, he said, Apostle, how are you doing it? You have been transporting people since Koinonia started. You are doing all of these things. You don't raise money. You don't do anything. You don't cajole. You don't invite preachers to raise. How do you do it? And I looked at him. I said, my brother, you must stay with God, not just to understand the call. Many of us, once you get the call, you just stand up and start running. No, the strategy is your advantage in any battle. Ask any military man. They call Operation ABC. That ABC is the strategy for the victory. If they say Operation this, the military people know that this is the formula we are using for the takeover. Strategy. When we started, I remember when God came and told me, said, son, the last meeting for every month is dedicated for a miracle service. It's a strategy. You will just get up blindly and go and make the last meeting of your own program to a miracle service and not get any result because it is a strategy. Every strategy has an anointing on it. You see us gather prayer requests here and I pray on it. For Bishop Oyedeko, his strategy is the power of the spoken word. You may not see anybody fall down under the anointing while he's speaking. But the strategy is that he uses the creative word, power of the word. Or a robot, his strategy was to lay hands. He didn't just speak. If there were 1,000 people, or a robot will lay hands one by one. But if he touches you, be sure you are standing up. Strategy. For Benny Hinn is to worship very sensitive annoying worship sometimes he can tell everybody hush and you're saying what is this i remember once upon a time they had a program with archbishop benson idahosa and he was worshiping worshiping and one time idahosa came and collected the mic and said rain is coming and idahosa just started shouting and that's how people started getting healed because the strategies are different 
William Branham will stand and say the angel that was assigned to him has not come and that's how he will wear those people there William Branham will stand like a herbalist and say he's apologizing let the people be patient and then at a point he will just say the angel has come word of knowledge he will start moving in a strange way and people attacked him he said that's the blueprint that was given every man of God if he sits down and he's honest with you he will tell you the strategy there is how I know the power of God is ready to move I can't teach you I can teach you generically but there is a strategy it's like the palm of your hand is wired for your use as a man of God I cry to God I say Lord what is the financial strategy for this ministry because this ministry will grow and now the the mass media that is supposed to be an avenue most churches raise finances a major part of the finance that runs ministry is from the media and now God is saying give the messages free don't sell anything imagine the hundreds of millions of naira that it would have brought and now it has gone Lord you have to reveal it ah when he comes to you my God when my God comes to you he will tell you something that does not make sense but you are stupid enough to take it as a strategy you will join those who are clapping for you to wonder and say Lord I fear you hallelujah yes. there is a strategy there is a way we do ministry here it's a strategy that God gave for Dr. Lukoya is prayer he will raise prayer points and you will pray and while you are praying in that prayer the power of God is moving and touching people there are many people for Papa Ia Deboye he will stand and in the calmness of his voice make a prophetic declaration and people will come for Reverend Dr. Uma Okwai he will raise a song and while he's dancing and singing people are rising up don't copy strategies receive strategies Listen, I assure you, and I want you to hear me as we round up. Believe me when I tell you this, that you will never fail. You walk with these truths that I teach you. You walk with these things that I tell you. It is arrogant to unnecessarily tamper with the equations. Many people, they don't have results yet, but they tamper with the equations. Receive it with childlike faith. Don't let anybody tell you this thing doesn't matter. Do they have the results you are looking for? There are many proud people, and I say this with every sincerity of heart. There are many proud people without results who go around talking against people who have tremendous results. Love everybody, but don't give your ears to people who don't have results. You will become like them. No man can give what he doesn't have. hallelujah can we pray one last prayer point I want you to challenge the spirit of laziness lukewarmness listen it says I would that thou were neither hot I mean either hot nor cold I would I desire you are not diligent and you are not completely lazy you are just somewhere in between if you are very hot i can make you hotter if you are cold i can know you are cold and help you but you are dilly-dallying in the middle of nowhere you are going to pray and cry that laziness especially the spirit many of us sincerely i love you and i don't mean to hurt or embarrass you but many of us are extremely lazy lazy to a surprising degree especially for a young man lord destroy laziness from my life lift your voice and pray financial laziness spiritual laziness intellectual laziness take it away from my life take it away from my life take it away from my life are you praying
Give me diligence to study. Diligence to be valuable. Hallelujah. Please permit me to add for us one more request. We are going to pray concerning this issue of value. I'm sure that by God's grace I will speak on it again for workers. But we are going to pray. Listen. 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 If you are not valuable, Koinonia, listen to me. Those outside, those online, listen to me. No matter how you convince yourself, if you want to reign in today's world, what you have must be exceptional. If everybody has what you have, there is no space for you. Did you hear what I said? If everybody has, this is not about competition. If what you have can be given by another person, cheaper or freer, you are in trouble. You must trust God to brand you with a level of value that makes you so unique. No devil of poverty or failure or mediocrity or inferiority hangs around you. I told you that a man of God was praying for me one time and he laid hands on my head and said, Father, create a problem in his region that only he will be able to solve. I thought, I, in my mind, I felt so bad because I said, Kai, no, I'm somebody who is for the body. I don't like this thing of one person outshining others. What kind of prayer is this? But when I understood value, then I prayed that prayer. And I said, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, create something, oh God, for me. I thought it was a joke. There are many preachers, but there is one Joshua Selman. The same way there are many people, but there is one Ejimi. There is one, when we want to hear the voice of Sam, Amaka cannot sing like Sam. Sam cannot sing like Amaka. If we want to hear the strings, Elijah and the music director don't play the same thing. Listen, when God makes you exceptionally valuable, sit back and watch the power of the Sabbath work in your life. It will be like a jam. The way men will run and come to you. I tell you this thing. I'm not lying to you. Take away your wrong mindset. Listen to me. You want to prosper and rise in today's world. It's more than a job. You need to master value in a way and manner. And it will shut the mouth of darkness. I look at my life today. If you listen to what I'm teaching you, my brothers and my sisters, you will sit back and wonder and say, what is this? Life is, it will look unfair. Don't think it's happening just because he's called Joshua Selman. It's not true. It's a law. Can you pray that one prayer as we're ending? I give you two, three minutes. Find a corner and cry to God. Lord, I'm not unique enough. I'm grateful for what you have made me. But I know there's something that you can put upon my life. That every time someone says Pastor Femi, every time someone says Pastor Alpha, I thank God for everybody but that uniqueness. Pray. Grant me the grace to be valuable. Hallelujah. Listen, your value is what brands you, is what identifies you as to whether you are rewardable or not. Pastor Lawrence is so good in the graphics. When you needed to, to write the names of School of Ministry students, as anointed as I am, you didn't come to meet me. Because with respect to that, I'm totally not valuable. It's not an insult, it's the truth. Tomorrow, when we want to cook for the workers, you are not going to meet Joshua Selman. Nobody has ever come to meet me for advice on cooking. As sincere as I am. 
you won't come because you don't consider me that valuable nobody has invited me today to sing praise and worship does it mean i cannot sing but i'm not that valuable there are many options why should you be picked when there are easy options to you i vowed and i told god i will never go and minister anywhere that they'll say mr man thank you this your honorarium go and the next time they discuss when they bring joshua and say no please no no way i will never do that so i pay the price in the word i pay the price in prayer i pay the price to know what to do and what not to do that's the key and it will bring you to to suck the breast of kings they will give you access to their treasures treasures that they would not even give their relatives and you will stand and wonder and say life can be this easy koinonia hear me if no one is looking for you it's because you are not valuable enough don't be angry take this truly if you are not valuable enough nobody will look for you are we together yes there are people i've met in my life it's amazing how as soon as i met them and discern their value those who used to provide that area of value they are, the doors of my favor towards them close immediately there are people like that are we together there are people who are doing one thing or the other for me is dangerous if you are easily replaceable i say it again it is dangerous when you become easily replaceable that means in this life you will not amount to much the consequence is that you will be angry you will be resentful you will hate everyone that's why i'm an advocate for mastery you have to trust god for grace to know whatever he's granted you grace to do and know it well if it means adding educational qualification to rise to that position of uniqueness do it if it means reorienting your mind even against what you study do it whatever price it takes to stand you out Paul a man approved of God you stand out not in a competitive way but in a unique way that brands you that's why I don't have enemies I don't insult anybody I don't fight anybody I'm more than grateful to be me I don't think it would have happened that way if I were not this valuable if I were not the one behind all the mighty testimonies by the Spirit of God that this ministry enjoys probably I would have joined the many people insulting others do you know when you have results you don't hate it's true it's true there's no need for it I live a very happy and peaceful life that's why I love the body of Christ I honor everyone resentment is a product of an awareness that a replacement is likely to happen to you but when you stand in a position on part of look at Benny Hinn Benny Hinn is friends with him he can bring any man of God to his program and talk with joy because we are talking of Benny Hinn here by the privilege of the grace of God Benny Hinn is Benny Hinn till he goes to be with the Lord Kenneth Copeland is Kenneth Copeland you can preach everything when Kenneth Copeland comes he is Kenneth Copeland God's system for faith insecurity and competition and backbiting and all of these things happen when there is an intrinsic fear that a system of value higher than yours is within a vicinity so rather than fighting you trust God and say Lord lift me the popular hymn says Lord lift me up and let me stand huh? by faith on heaven's table land it says a higher plane than I found Lord set my feet on higher ground that's the prayer father we thank you for tonight I have spoken to your people addressing what may be the gap between them and their results and Lord I have spoken by your spirit as you have inspired me I ask tonight in the name of Jesus that these words will be spirit and life to the listeners 
Lord, as they subscribe to the laws of diligence, I pray that their results will come speedily. In the name of Jesus, that those who laugh at you now, their tongues will cleave to the roof of their teeth because they will see the wonder-working power of God in your life. I pray for someone here who may be discouraged and is wondering, Lord, I've done my best. I've done my best. I speak a word of hope for you right now. And I declare that you will have the last laugh in the name of Jesus. That which you are doing by the Spirit will work for you. It may take time, but as surely as the sun arises after a night time, your result will come. I pray for the grace to be strategic in your approach. That you will not dissipate energy randomly. And I pray for the fortitude to be sacrificial and that with pleasure in the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, I pray for you that in the name of Jesus, the grace and the ability to be tenacious and unbending, the resolve to stay through, may that grace be supplied you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hands to Jesus very quickly. Lord, we thank you. There's someone here saying, Apostle, I need Jesus. We're in a hurry, but it's no license for me to leave this place without a genuine encounter with Jesus. Another person is saying, Apostle, I love God, but the way my life is right now, I think that I really need a restoration. You may be inside, you may be outside. Wherever you are, please, I like you, even if it's just one of you. Be bold, be courageous. Take that step and walk towards me right now. I want to pray for you. Koinonia, appreciate them. Someone is coming. God bless you. Someone is coming. Is this the best you can do, Koinonia? There are people outside. If you are coming, join them quickly. God bless you for your courage. God bless you for your courage. Keep clapping, Koinonia. Jesus is bringing them. Jesus is bringing them. Those coming from outside, please clear the way for them very quickly. Join quickly. I want to pray now. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Those of you in front, I love you and I appreciate you. While we wait for those outside to quickly join them if there are any, I want you to raise your right hand. Say after me very sincerely. Say, Lord Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus. Please join them. Join them. My sister, God bless you. Those online, you can join them to say, Lord Jesus. I love you say it again I love you and I believe that you are the son of God tonight I ask you to forgive my sins to cleanse me with your precious blood I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life I declare that from tonight I'm a child of God amen Thank you so much for this great decision. Please follow the lady waving her hands. All of you in front, God bless you. Follow that lady waving her hands. There will be a group of people to receive you and communicate a few words. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.